Welcome to episode 7 of the Red Leaf Retrocast. Uh, unfortunately, the man who picked the topic, Mr. Josh, is not here today due to, well, it's Victoria Day weekend, May long weekend here in Canada. That's what is it is referred to. Um, I'm sure he has family stuff he's doing. But anyways, today's topics, we're going over uh, E3 speculations, that's our general topic, and movie-based games is what we're going over, and I am joined here with Kevin. Why do we have to play movie games? No one knows they're good. <sighs> that's gen- that's generally the consensus on them. Um, there are a few out there that are pretty good. Actually, a, a couple of them. I that think it was I good. think it was Josh's evil plan to go. Yes, you're gonna play movie based games, and then I'm gonna bounce. <laughs> Jokes on him. I liked one. Uh, yeah, not all were terrible. <laughs> they were definitely video games. Uh, that's what they wanted to be. Oh, well, they tried their best. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, uh, we got we got a good show today. Um, I'm JD from Moosenspiel. You can find it on YouTube and Twitter and Bowling JD and Kevin. Where can we find you? Vidme, YouTube, Twitter, um, in dark alleys behind schools and uh, my ex wife. <laughs> Trench coat and all. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're awful! You're awful. I know. Uh, Why was I? Well, it's been here? it's been it's been a little while. We've been busy adulting. You're working sixty plus hour weeks. Uh, I haven't been traveling, but I've been definitely doing the uh, office work hard the past month. Uh, but what kind of games have you been playing? Playing at all? Watching TV? What do you got? Uh, you know what? Weirdly enough, I just don't watch TV anymore because like games are my main method of entertainment. But if I'm playing anything, it's uh, on my Vita before work. And I beat Super Meat Boy recently. Uh, I saw your post of that. I was very excited. I'm not doing the Dark Worlds because I'm not, you know, psychotic. Um, <laughs> I I play a lot of Ghost Recon Wildlands with my brother lately, which is, it's good. I mean, it won't blow your mind away, but uh, it's an, I like military shooters. And then I started Darksiders 2 because I saw the announcement for the third one, and I pretty much dropped everything. It was like, this is the time to do it. So it's finally time to play the game. I, I bought it. I bought it four times, and I have not played it. I bought it. Um, I bought it uh, digitally on the Wii U. I don't know why I did that. It was like two dollars off a code site. I found two sealed copies for the Wii U in a Goodwill, and then I okay. gave those to friends who wanted them. And I was like, whatever, I'll find the copies eventually. And then I found one for three sixty for like two bucks. I was like, all right, I'm keeping this one. This is the time. So <laughs> that's the one I'm keeping. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't even. I prefer things on my PS3, but whatever. It's a game. It just it, the game is so good. It's if you if you haven't played the Dark Siders, it's Zelda meets God of War, quite literally. But that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't been able to dabble into the franchise at all. I don't know. Maybe it's just not my kind of game. If, I mean, um, if you like kinda... Zelda games, but the the dungeons are more linear, so it's more like every room is a mini obstacle course. As opposed to like a Zelda dungeon, we're like, all right, I hit something on the third floor, and then on the first floor in the lower right, like it did something. It's like it's more like a Mega Man screen. Gotcha. Yeah, I like the setup a little better. But, uh, uh, well, we were talking before the podcast started over like genres we just couldn't get into, mm-hmm. or just can't get into. What are what are some you were you were mentioning to me? Uh, number one is real time strategy. Just I'm not even gonna bother. I don't have the brain power. Uh, oh, so like a Blizzard type game? Yeah, I can't do it. There's too many things going on at once. I remember when everyone used to be obsessed with Asian Empires when I was little, and the only way I could win any game against AI even is like if I put on the the cheat that made everything build right away. So I'd build a wonder, and then I'd also have to have Corvettes that shot the machine guns. <laughs> There's no other way I can win that game. I don't know how anyone does it. I feel like the time I get going in an RTS, uh, the guy I'm playing with is already like four years ahead of me. And just, no, I can't. I can't win. <laughs> yeah, I've never been into real-time strategy myself. It's it's just that kind of esports scene that I just don't have the time to put in into a game like that. Like MOBAs, where too. Where I would be, yeah. It's, it's just, it's too much time and effort to really get anywhere decent. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a, RTSs I can't do, I, I think I like turn-based strategy, but... Recently, because, like I said, the only things I'm playing before work are my Vita and DS, I tried playing Advance Wars, because that's a good series I really like, but I'm really, really bad at, and I think I talked about it last time, actually, I just, I can't 
I, I'm just not good at strategy, but I like this guy, and I like you don't like you don't like thinking two, three, four, five, ten moves ahead. No, I, I don't have the brain power, <laughs> especially for the limited time I have to play. Like I'm sure if I sat down and mindlessly thought out every action, I could do it. But I mean, there's other series I like, like uh, this guy, and I want to try Final Fantasy Tactics, but I got I got so scared from like how bad I did in Advance Wars. I'm like, if I gotta like this. I, I maybe not a good a good series to jump into for uh, turn based strategy is the Fire Emblem series, and then you can turn off the permadeath. See, that's the thing. I love Fire Emblem, other than the fact that the whole series is too expensive to own a game. But no, I mean if you got a 3ds, those all those games are affordable. They're all forty bucks now, and then the new one with that forty five dollars season pass. Oh, don't we won't even we won't even get into that. That's bad. But it's, Fire Emblem Echoes uh, also got pretty pretty poor reviews. Yeah, yeah, they um not to diverge too much, but I guess like they made it too much like the old game without like adding anything. So, uh, well, I mean, that's kind of what they said they were going to do. But they did kind of hype up that we've added a new spin on everything. But it seems like the new spin is we made it added. prettier. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> the new spin is it's 2017. That's it. That's about it. There's um. What other genre can't I do? I like fighting games. I'm not good at them, but I really like playing them. Does that count? I, I adore fighting games, but good God, it's it, it's so ridiculous, especially when you start playing people that start talking about frames. and. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> too much. Oh, I know the last genre I was going to say. Uh, survival horror. You. From the last thing. Oh, well, Mr. I can't get into Alone in the Dark 4. Look, I, I just, I, I want, if I want to be, like, I like something like Outlast or, like, Alien Isolation, like I said. It's just, like, the finding and the doing small puzzles, I'm just like, yeah, I can't right now. Nope. Oh, you're thinking too much. You gotta, you gotta think B, B-movie horror type things, I situations. Like, I like all the combat and the cutscenes of Resident Evil. I don't like finding a tiger eye and putting it in a statue that... Uh, this guy has for some reason. That's how police stations need to be locked up at night. That's stupid. <laughs> you live in America. It's a dangerous country. Yeah, you know what? They're probably on the right track there, actually. <laughs> uh, well, I can't really get into zombie games too often, which is weird coming from the fact that I do like survival horror games. That is a very but weird I'm contrast. Ta- I'm, I'm talking the run-and-gun zombie games, and there's there's a game we'll be going over that's uh, we're going to get more into... Um, but yeah, like call it the Call of Duty with the zombie mode, and uh, I mean the, the market's oversaturated. It's it's like playing a racing game today. It's nothing's different. <laughs> well, it depends what kind of racing game. If you're going with like a kart racer, I'm into those. Like Hello well, Kitty Kart Cruisers Deluxe is doing really well, isn't it? No, Hello Kitty Cruisers. Get real. Stop being a casual. Oh, God. Stop being a casual gamer. <laughs> Stop being such a normie. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Or DreamWorks well, Supercarts. Lately, I've uh, I got I got a couple games fairly recently in between episodes. Here, I got uh, Poyo Poyo versus Tetris on the Nintendo Switch. It's pretty good, actually. I wanted to play that on a. Uh, isn't there a Vita copy? Or is it just PS4? Uh, I believe it's on every console, but I, I wanted it for the Switch to just you know kind of get more games for it. I've been waiting on it long enough, uh, and the fact that the Switch is basically mobile, that game is amazing. I love it. It's it gets ridiculously hard. Uh, I've I've I never thought that I would play another Tetris game and think it's fresh. <laughs> is it? See, the the only thing that turned me off about it is when I hear Puyo Puyo Tetris. I thought it was going to be somehow it combines the two games, but it seems like it's like oh you're doing Puyo Puyo stuff now. Oh now you're doing Tetris. I thought it was going to combine the two rules of the game. And so it, there's actually a bunch of different modes in the game. Okay. To play, so you could be if you and I are playing, for example, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I could be. I could choose. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna play Poyo Poyo, and you can play Tetris, right. or we can both play Tetris, or both play Poyos. Uh, there's a mode where it's just like a speed. It, it sets up blocks, and you just have to put the block in the right place to make them all go down quicker. Okay. Um, to to just string combos, and you just you're just working against the clock. There's a uh, a number of different versus modes. One combines the two games into one, which is ridiculous. So that that's it's the kind one of hard to figure out. Then. Yeah, that's in there. Right. The one I find the most crazy is uh, every ten. I think it's like every ten seconds, it switches between the game. So you can you will both be playing Poyo for ten seconds, and then a, the timer will hit ding ding ding, and then switch to Tetris. 
Oh, jeez. Timer will hit again, switch back. That one's really difficult because the two games require such a different uh, section of your brain <laughs> to play. There's some there's some there's an actual story mode in the game as lame as it is. What story is uh, there in Puyo Puyo Tetris? Oh my god, it's ridiculous. It, it goes from like intradimensional travel to uh, uh, time travel and and finding characters in different worlds that are in the Puyo world. It's all over the place. I feel like I'm on some type of drug. I was gonna say this makes <laughs> zero sense to me. <laughs> it's it's really funny. Um, it's in that same realm of Super Bomberman R mm-hmm. of that. Style, uh, art style, uh, but yeah, I mean it's a fun game. I'm having a blast with it. It's but it's so hard. Uh, I really and then I got, that. and then I got near Automata. Oh, how is that? Because I hear nobody talk about it. It's a really good game. It's it's that kind of action RPG that just does everything well, mm-hmm. and it has the the kind of attractive young girl going for it. Uh, now I know why you bought it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm playing <laughs> I'm playing it for the plot. I tried pl- yeah. I well the actually the plot's pretty interesting. Uh, robots, humanities out in space and they've made robots to kind of take care of Earth um, until it's livable again and uh, I haven't gotten too far into it because I've been trying to play it on difficulty hard. <laughs> I try it has there's one okay if you play on very hard it, it basically punishes you it's a one hit kill system oh yeah mm. the only redeeming factor of that is there's a button where you're where you're temporarily invincible it's like a teleport button so, uh, so that seems like but, it's easy then though uh, no because is if you, the, what what makes it unforgivable or unforgiving not unforgivable is the fact that it doesn't have an autosave system in the game. You have to manually save wherever. So I, w- I, I did a Twitch stream over my first experience with it, and it starts out with a, a bullet hell. You're in, you're in this transformable mech, and you're going through it, and I, I was playing on difficulty hard, and you have to go, you have to beat two major boss battles before you even have the ability to save. And if you get hit by one single robot, it hits you like five times, and then you immediately die. <laughs> You're really into those Souls games. I mean, it probably seems about like right. it's. It was so. It's so punishing. I. I was. I was. I was crying. I was. I was in tears. It took me two hours to beat the intro. <laughs> so that seems like exactly. Where is this Twitch stream? Is this archived? I need to see you cry. No, nah, it's. It's already. Bullshit. It's not archived. It's. It's already been a couple weeks. This is, um, makes me sad. But yeah, it took me a couple hours to, to beat it. I had a couple friends watching me. They're they're obsessed with the game as well. Um, it's it's just brutal, but it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend Nier Automata, and it's it, it sold really well. It's been selling. See, I, it's good for Square. I hear a lot of people talking about it selling, but I other than you, I don't know a single person that bought it. So I'm like very confused on like the whole state of the series because I don't know anyone that played the first one either. You don't need to. It takes place like a thousand years after the first one. It has nothing to do with it. See, I, I hate when companies do that. It's like, why, then why'd you call it near this, you know? Well, it's still in that same universe. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Like, the only yeah. thing the only thing similar is just this weird backstory that you that they explain. Because all you care about is the backstory of what of the game you're currently playing. True. So it's 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 definitely a series you can just straight up straight dive into. It's I'm I'm having a blast with it. Uh, it really took. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn to the to the back burner. Whoa, I'm still just messing whoa, around in that game. Whoa, whoa. I absolutely love it. Don't you insult me with such words. Oh, it's so good. Horizon Zero Dawn <laughs> is the game of the year already. I I'm I'm sticking with my I put it over Zelda speech. You should uh, no is your wait you're saying Horizon is better than Zelda? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's a better game. Well, speaking of better games and possibly games coming out and, and uh, rumors Seamless and news, transition. Ooh. So, I'm getting so good at this. E3's coming up, Mr. Kevin. It is. Mr. American. I quite love E3, and I love the things it brings along. And also the I, memes. I'm a big fan as well. I also watch Tokyo Game Show, the highlights of that. Nintendo directs every once in a while, but Nintendo's kind of struggling. Yeah. Uh Right now, it's yeah, we'll get we'll get into each company individually, um, but let's 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 go into some news rumors uh, over some of the major developers 
that are E3, such as Ubisoft and Bethesda. They always have their own little conference now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silent Butthole is right around the corner. I if you saw that. Wait, news. wait, wait! Did you? What'd you call it? Uh, it's the si- It's Silent Fractured Butthole. butthole. Fractured Butthole. I was like, oh, I was like, God. Silent but Deadly. Are we? Is there another? Oh one? man! <laughs> well, I, ah, the butt puns. <laughs> yeah, fractured butthole is right around the corner. Thank you. <laughs> I was so confused. I'm like, I oh, I missed man. something. Uh, or so I'm sure. I'm sure they'll kind of hype that up a bit. Uh, I'm excited. But for that. Ubisoft is coming out with their their big guns again. Their 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 longstanding franchises. Far Cry Five was announced, and the new Assassin's Creed Origins. So really, really breaking grounds with the name. With yeah, the name yeah. uh, convention there. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm so. The problem with Ubisoft is everyone's made the the connections like they all their open world games like even Wildlands, which I'm playing, like do the same thing. So like it's like, do you really want to? Like, I don't. I I'm not. I, I'm not in a rush to get another Assassin's Creed because it's just like, well, you go to a watchtower, you climb it, the map opens up bigger. There's these little guard bases. Like it, it follows, Not that I hate the formula, but I really want Assassin's Creed to do something new. I heard a rumor there's going to be an Egypt one. But I don't uh, know. Yeah, that's that's what they're talking it's about. It's this one. Yeah. So if they do it like where you can go into like pyramids and like tombs of kings or something, that would be cool. Like, you know, dungeon exploring kind of instead of like crawling above. Depends how much depends how much what's new in the game. Yeah. Because the last one in London didn't do really anything. The, all the all the cities look exactly the same. That's what I'd be worried about with Egypt. Like, I I couldn't tell you the difference between if you showed me a screenshot from the like all the I would say the first four Assassin's Creeds. Like so from one to Revelations, like mm-hmm. all the streets look the same. I couldn't tell you what was the Middle East, what was Italy, what was America. Like it all looks the same. So I would hope for Egypt to be like more in the desert and like not as many buildings. Instead of going vertically, you'd go like below ground. Okay. I would hope. And then Far Cry, I mean, uh, it's Far Cry. I like it, but <laughs> it's Far Cry. <laughs> yeah. Uh the 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 big the big rumor that I'm seeing about the new Far Cry game is um it's possibly going to be in VR. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. play PlayStation VR Far Cry 5. If that's the case, I will definitely be getting the game. Yeah, you're you're a VR guy, I forgot. Oh. I'm I I like it. It's so immersive. The game could be so simple, and it just—it's a game changer, basically. And to get to, to get a game on the scale of Far Cry Five, it, it would be—I think it would be the level of what Resident Evil uh, did on VR. Resident Evil Seven was definitely good. Like, finally, a AAA game can do this thing. The only thing stopping it is I don't need to buy VR to play it. So, like, it, it almost seems like you need, like, not if it's not Far Cry 5, it'd be, like, something like a spin-off Far Cry to be, like, you can only play this on VR. Like, it just needs that for me to get it, you know? Exclusive sell things. Um, in the in the case of Resident Evil, it was, it's so, it, it's the immersion. Yeah. And it, it feels like a different game when you're playing it on VR. It really does. I don't know if you've seen uh, YouTube videos or just news sites of, like, grandmas playing Resident Evil 7. It's hilarious. Oh, God. They're, like, freaking out and throwing the controller through the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one where the, oh, girl, where the grandma got the gun out and, like, shot stuff. Oh, well, that one's fake. I know, that but it, it was hilarious yeah. still. It's still funny, but... <laughs> so, yeah, new, new Assassin's Creed. Unless they do something different there. I, I've been done with Assassin's Creed since, um, since 4, the Pirates. I still got to play. I was done after three, and I keep wanting to like go in and try four, but three, yeah. three burn. And then uh, if Far Cry Five is in VR, I will be hopping on that. If not, um, I've been done with Far Cry basically since three. I got four. That I mean, it was fun, but that was only because it was cheap. Uh, what about Bethesda? They've uh, they've they've got their co- they they've got their couple things coming out. Have you uh, are you familiar with Wolfenstein by any chance? I loved New Order, and I actually I stupidly <laughs> played it on PS3. Uh, Why are you what are you making fun of me for? Uh, well, I mean, come on, everyone's heard of Wolfenstein. Yeah, I know, I liked it though. A gamer has heard of Wolfenstein. What is a what is a Doom? Um, actually, you know what? <laughs> what is a Doom? How weird would it be if they actually announced Doom Two? I know it's too soon for that, but I'd be like, okay, we need to fix these names, guys. I wouldn't put it past 
past Bethesda, but I would say that's tw- that's more towards 2018. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a while. Um, if they announce anything, I think it's going to be uh, like a, a sixth Elder Scrolls game that isn't the MMO, because I don't think anyone cares about ESO. I know it's, mm. it's there, but I don't know many people that really cared about it after it came out. I don't know. Uh, Could be me. I'm, I'm very curious about Wolfenstein, uh, because New Order was a good game. It just took a while to get into it. Oh, I thought it picked so up right away. They, uh, all the it was re- like a good hour or two before... My, come on, it, the opening was great. The guy has been in a coma for how many years? He gets up somehow, and his legs work flawlessly, shoots all these zombies, or er, zombies... All these Nazis, and then he just goes, oh yeah, my legs hurt, and then falls over again. Uh, I don't know, it felt like a, a giant tutorial, which you actually wanted to talk about today. Maybe we'll get into that yeah, at the end. if we get there. Uh, game, yeah, tutorials and games, if we get there. I'm sure we'll have time. Uh, the one that I'm really s- actually pretty surprised about to hear Bethesda's coming out with a sequel is The Evil Within. That's something I'd... I'm not shocked, but I don't think anyone was really... Asking for that. <laughs> no. Um, I think it sold well in Europe. I know it sold well in Germany. I'm not sure about the rest of Europe. Uh, but it was a PlayStation launch title, if I'm not mistaken, or, or close to it. I got it on PlayStation 3 for $2 at Target Sealed. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's it's a, it's a horror game that just... I don't know. It felt like poor porn at times. Um, didn't really do anything special for the genre, but... I don't know. People who have played it really like it, and they try to break it down psychologically. So maybe it has this big cult following that I'm not familiar with. I I get it mixed up with Dying Light all the time. (laughs) Well, that's fair enough. (laughs) Like, the the covers are kind of... Like, they're not similar, but, like, I just feel like the gameplay is the same, and I can't differentiate the two, so... um, Maybe i got to try it, but from what I've seen, it just looks... It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well, we'll we'll see what happens with Evil Within. I hope it's I hope it's gonna try. You know, I keep reiterating it, but trying something new. Mm. You know, fine is not okay anymore. No standards have been set. Yeah, Out, Outlast is doing better than AAA developers. You know, so it's like, boy, you want to talk about a game that's just straight gore porn? and play Outlast too. <laughs> I I've, I've only dabbled in Outlast one, but the more I try it, I'm like, I gotta do a video of this, and I gotta scream like a girl, like. <laughs> well, Outlast, Outlast was good. Outlast 2 is just gore porn. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so that's Bethesda. Uh, I don't, I don't think they're really gonna do much more than than these rumors. They they, they might show something over, they're the ones that do Elder uh, uh, Skyrim, right? Yeah, and they, they did the whole, like, oh, we're working on Fallout 4, surprise, it's out in, like, two weeks. So yeah, I, can see I don't them. see another Fallout. Maybe a, a Fallout, another Fallout DLC. I could see happening. I think they're done with that. Um, honestly, I I don't know. People still play it. They do. I I haven't beaten it because I think Bethesda games are buggy pieces of shit generally. Um, uh, yes, I would agree. That's yeah, I why got, the Evil Within is on the list. I got so much shit for one day. I put in like every gaming group because I was pissed. I got into the Institute of Fallout Four, and like the game glitched and I couldn't get out. And everyone's like, oh, that's why you make multiple saves. Should make... I'm like, okay, fine, but, like, that doesn't excuse that this game's buggy as shit. Well, you should just know better, because it's Bethesda. I'm like, why th- Why do they get a pass? You know? Right, why Why does this company get a pass, yeah. and, and a company like Ubisoft... Oh, the games are uh, so open-world, the things are going on, so the code is like, eh, that's great, but, like... As much as, as much as people shit on Ubisoft, I like them as a company. They make solid you know, when games. They, they make solid games. Yeah. Um... Sure, the uh, the France Assassin's Creed had issues at first, but they did actively try to fix it, and it, and it was fixed. Well, they now, sp- they spread themselves too thin because they made Rogue that same year that nobody right. played. Yeah, that was that was that was uh, an issue they brought on themselves. But every time Ubisoft comes out with a game, it's it's pretty it's it's a solid game. Right. Um, is it for you or or not? That's a different story. So I'm I'm look I always look forward to the Ubisoft conference. Um, Beth- Bethesda, I'll just probably get the highlights because I just I'm just not into Bethesda games myself no. uh, but I am curious about Wolfenstein so I'll probably I'll probably be paying close attention to that because I do like the Wolfenstein maybe, franchise maybe they do return to return to Castle Wolfenstein <laughs> uh, hey if they do a remaster of a game like that that'd be awesome I would be into that actually I haven't played uh, my PS2 copy but I'd be into it I'll try it so. uh, some other games on the horizon 
Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, that's definitely going to be there. Uh, for sure. But Rockstar doesn't really do E3, do they? Well, I'm just, you know, just games in general being announced now. Oh, fair. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't look like EA is going to have anything going on this year. And nothing of value was lost. I mean, FIFA. Oh, no. No new Battlefield, you know, the, it, just the yearly games. Uh, EA will be EA. A Battlefront. Uh, but yeah, Red, Red Dead 2. Red Dead 2. That's going to be... I'll see, uh, I'm, a lot of people do love that. I do, I'm do. i a big fan of the Grand Theft Horse, the first one. <laughs> what the second one is going to do, I'm not sure if I'll be getting it. I'm more into playing things that I've never seen before, which gets me to the next game. Um, and you can go back to Red Dead once I go through this. Uh, Death Stranding. Mr. Kojima. What is that? That's something is that game I'm... even a horror game? Like, I don't know what it is, and everyone's just losing their shit because it's got uh, Kojima. But that's what makes it. it so interesting. Yeah, but like, I, I want to know what just, the genre it is. At least, look at this. Look at this. What is this? I think it's a mixture of advent. I think it's an adventure horror. That's what. It, that's what it's playing. I playing playing uh, up as. Um, but I think it's going to have a release date. Hmm. That's my prediction over Death Stranding. I'm pumped. That's it's a new it's a new property, new title. Uh, big big guy behind the game. I have high hopes for Death Stranding, personally. Hmm. Kevin, I, I'm into it. I'm just I don't know what it's going to be, and I'm scared of it. What about Red Dead? Red Dead, I a whole a little, well that's again. I, I a lot of people get on Rockstar because all they do is like the big open world games, which I think is a kind of a shitty claim. But I wouldn't mind seeing something more like Red Dead Revolver. So something more straightforward, not constant Grand Theft Auto, basically. Well, the thing about like Rockstar's open world games, while they're like the standard, is that like essentially the hub world is just like it's a bunch of time wasters, and then you do, like they're essentially just go to the next level whenever you feel like it. So I, I kind of would rather have a story because I I feel like Revolver's biggest flaw was I have to go like what was it? He was not his son. It was a. Uh, he has to find his old, like, gang members and take him down. But first, I'm going to play poker. Like, I don't know, to <laughs> me, it, it, like, takes it out of out of it, you know? Yeah. I mean, when I played Red Dead, I was more into the story than screwing around. Occasionally, I would get sidetracked and do something. But, yeah, it just felt like I was going point A to point B too often. And um, I, have a, I, have a, I have a nagging feeling that Red Dead 2 is just going to be more of the first game with 2017 on it. I, I really hope it's not, but then, well, John Marsden's spoiler. Why would they? Ch why would they change a formula that has, is a proven seller in Grand Theft Auto Five? Well, it's gonna be. It's gonna be just like that. Well, because now that John Marsden is dead, sorry, spoilers for an old game, but like, what's this? His kid's name's Jack, so like, maybe Jack was on like his own thing, and like with a new hero, they change genres, you know? Possibly, maybe. I don't know. I'm just hoping, like more Max Payne style, but cowboys. I don't know. I, I, I doubt it. I know it's I not going to happen. It. It's, I'm very, just it's very much speculation at this point what, what they're doing with the game. Oh, it's going to be Grand Theft Auto 2. I know it is. <laughs> oh, for sure. So the next game is Star Wars Battlefront 2. I have zero interest in it. It's Star oh. Wars. It's uh, <laughs> it'll, People are going to buy it. It's Star Wars. People are going to play the crap out of it. Will it have a, a multiplayer? Will it have a level? Will it have a story? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hopeful because I like while I liked Battlefront, I guess, 3. I'm going to call it 3. Um, it was good. It was just like after I did some online matches, like, and then what? And then I did the offline stuff, and I was like, this, this is boring. And like Battlefront One and Two on PS2 didn't really have a campaign. It really just had segmented missions. If you really break it down, so I'd be fine with that. I just I need something to do because I can't even find a game in Battlefront anymore. If it has, if it has a single player campaign. That's well put together, and it's not like two hours long. I would, I would be, I would now be interested in it. Because let's face it, Star Wars. As much as I'm not a diehard fan like a lot of people, mm -hmm. it is an interesting world. It is, but even if it had like an offline bot zone, which I don't understand why Battlefront One really didn't have. Like it had survival waves, and like I don't want that. Just let me do the like, just let me do the game modes with bots. I'm cool. Like that's fine. Would they do it though in their multiplayer? I don't know. They did it with Titanfall 2. So well, I would hope. 
I don't know. Titans. We'll, we'll, I, 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 I'm, I have a feeling that when they start going over Star Wars Battlefront 2, it'll be focusing on multiplayer because that's what people are into. That's what sells. Uh, they might touch on single player, but very minimal. It, um, it sells, but they've I, I, heard finger, the voices. Finger, fingers crossed for the bot mode, for sure. Yeah, but, like, multiplayer sells, but, you know, for people like you and me, like, the ones that have, like, influenced them to be like, okay, we need a campaign. You know, they did it with Titanfall 2. They did it with Battlefield. I mean, it had a campaign, but, like, they were like, we're going to make Battlefield 1 campaign good. And they did. Yeah. So I'm hoping somebody at EA is like, oh, yeah, they give us money, too. Shit. Huh. <laughs> oh, boy. Well... I don't see Sony doing much over VR because Farpoint just came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be getting that soon enough. Uh, it got okay reviews, but they say the um, the immersion factor saved the game, which makes sense because it's virtual reality. Uh, and the the fact that you can you use the move, move controller to shoot it like an actual gun, it's it's been said that that's a game changer. So I don't see a lot of VR on the horizon. Um, unless it's Horizon VR, do it. So unless it's Horizon VR, no, that'd be way too complicated. Are you kidding me? I know it would, but I just technology is just not there yet. Look, I know I said I needed a reason to buy like into VR and like for a new game, but Horizon VR would make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> but Sony, if if you're familiar with what Sony did last year at E3 in 2016, they basically gave us a bunch of teasers of games coming out. Right. And I think this year is going to be actual gameplay footage, more info about the game. So that would be something along the line of the new Uncharted one with uh, oh, with yeah. Chloe and and uh, what's her face from Uncharted Four. We'll see more of that. Uh, we'll see Last of Us Two. We'll see get more backstory on probably Joel Joel and uh, Ellie. They should have called it the Rest of Us. The Rest of Us. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Did you hear the, the, the last, fan theory? The Rest about, of Us. Uh, uh, last of Us Two. No, what's the the fan theory? So you saw the original trailer, right? Where like Ellie's playing her guitar, and then Joel comes in and says, "Like, what are you gonna do?" And she's like, "I'm gonna kill them all." Oh, so that uh, you so you didn't see the original trailer, or no? No, I did not. Okay, so the the premise is like Ellie's playing a guitar, and it's just like random flashbacks of like her like fighting people, and then Joel walks in the door, but like it's like a artistic shot, like he's only like you see him from the waist down, like facing Ellie. He's like, "So what are you gonna do?" And she whispers, "Like, I'm gonna kill them all." So the theory is that like between games like Joel's dead and he got murdered so she's just gonna fuck everybody up oh I, boy I would love that Ellie's a badass that would be that. you know what that would be really cool I'm, I'm there's no doubt in my mind I'm gonna get Last of Us 2 because they let's buy. face it it's a it's a guaranteed buy it's it's they're gonna do it right they did it right the first time they're gonna do it right the second time <laughs> it could be the same game again with a different story <laughs> I'm into that that's fine you know uh, we'll see more over God of War. I don't know why they just don't call it God of War Valhalla or whatever they're going for. It's just God of War. They God want to of reboot four. the franchise. God of God of Four. Yep. <laughs> Boy, you're on fire today. I wish Gears of War was Gears of Four too. <laughs> oh boy. Puns. Uh, I really want I, that game though. Naming convention in, in games these days is so unimaginative. Uh, as soon as they get to numbers, they. They just restart it. I don't know why. Because now we're gonna have to go through God of War. Oh, uh, PS2 or PS4? I think they're, I don't think they're gonna keep it just God of War like blank. I think they're gonna actually call it like God of War like. Valhalla. I don't think so. They're they're just gonna straight up call it a reboot, a relaunch, and call it God of War. But they, just like what they did with Ratchet and Clank. But they referenced in the um, they referenced in the trailer like the old games like that Kratos is on like a new life. So like they're not totally getting rid of it, but Ratchet and Clank was a straight remake, so I can understand why they did that. If they call it God of War Resurrection, That's, I will be super irritated. That is such a generic name, I really hope not. Yeah, Revelation, God of uh, War, Resurrection, Retribution. Retribution, Origins, like, Revelation, Revengeance. Revengeance. <laughs> uh... Such a I, I mean, if it's in, if it's in North Mytho- Norse mythology, why wouldn't they call it, like, God of War Valhalla? Or God of or God of Fjord, <laughs> God of f- f- Fury, Fury. I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, well, I wanted to bring this game up because it's it doesn't it hasn't gotten as much news. Uh, it's called Hellblade. I know nothing. Same people who made uh um uh what's that game? Um, 
The main character was named Nariko. It was a PS3 oh, launch. Heavenly Sword. Heavenly Sword. Yep. Heavenly Sword. Same people. Uh, they're making Hellblade. So you're this you're this uh, girl. You're this woman tribe. It's a tribe woman, and she's kind of going insane. Like she's got someone in her head, and it's very. It's supposed to be a very psychological game. Uh, you're facing the forces of darkness. It has one on one. It has a. Uh, it looks like it has a really cool one on one battle system. Hmm. I highly recommend look it up. This game looks incredible. And I want to. I want. I definitely want to hear more about it. And it seems like at this year E3, uh, we're finally going to get uh, more information over it. That's fair. I, I I knew nothing about it. I wanted to play Heavenly Sword, but I just never got to it. It just seemed so much like God of War. It was almost like not worth it. No, Heavenly Heavenly Sword is really good. Um, and uh, there's no the the company uh, does a really good job with with their titles. They take forever to come out, but when it comes out, it's it's a it's a above solid game. Last Guardian, am I right? I was attached to that game. <laughs> I, saw, I haven't played any Lyco games. <laughs> I can't. I, I like them all. I like them all. They're not for everybody, but I really enjoyed Last Guardian. I really did. It had one of the most uh, touchy feely, emotional game endings I've experienced in a long time. That's for sure. So then we went through. Well, we went through a lot of Sony. I gotta ask, what do we see anything from Nintendo? Uh, so Nintendo's got a few rumors. Um, I think I think what they'll do is they'll they'll do their general video conference. They'll they might give us more information over Mario Odyssey. They yeah. might reveal possibly Super Smash Deluxe. <laughs> is it, is that the name, or are you just making a name? I mean Mario Kart Deluxe. Why not Smash Deluxe? Well. I mean, Nintendo likes to put the name of their system in this, so I'm hoping for Super Switch Smash. Super Smash Switch. Bam. Say that. Switch to Smash? Switch to Smash Brothers Deluxe and Knuckles. Uh, so, I don't, I just don't know what Nintendo is going to do, because they already, I mean, with the announce, with the, uh, the Switch launch, we have a lot of information on the games coming out. You know, Splatoon 2 is coming out soon. Um... That's about it. <laughs> I, I honestly, I need something. I need a reason to buy a Switch, and I don't need a better or a portable version of a game. I need like Mario Odyssey looks cool, and I was super into like it's an open world Mario. Except I heard that like, the city thing they showed off is like one world, so like don't get too attached to it. Um, That's I, good though, because we don't want Sonic Adventure again. Oh come on! It worked out so well last time. Um, oh, Sonic oh, Six, oh. right? Um, and then, like, I don't know what else is going to be on the Switch. Like, I don't give a shit about ARMS. That game, I don't even know what it is. Um, it, it's, a, it's, I mean, it's an interesting new take on a fighting game, but I'm not going to spend, you know, like, 90 Canadian dollars to, to buy a pseudo-fighting game. Right. That I, I can already see myself getting tired of it pretty quick when I have Street Fighter 5 that I can just keep going back to. <laughs> and then the, there's Ultra Street Fighter 2 the final challenge. Yeah, final. Capcom knows that word real well. Um, <laughs> I, I don't care. It looks like Super Street Fighter 2 HD. Um, That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's just like, I don't I don't know what there is to be excited on the Switch yet. Until like Xenoblade 2 comes out, I don't care. Like, I just, I need a reason to care about that system. Yeah, so I don't see much coming out of Nintendo except more, uh, Maybe just advertising the Switch heavily, uh, which is fine. Which would be great, but like, why is if they want it to be my portable system? Why are they still making 3DS games? Because it's still selling really well in Japan. It is, but like the only reason it's selling well, and I know this is stereotype, but like, but like people who are obsessed with Nintendo will buy every iteration of a, a 3DS for no reason. Like, there's no reason. Like, I know people that are getting the new. 2DS XL and Knuckles, but I it's just why it does the same thing. You already have a 3DS for, you know. Yeah. Well, the big the big rumor out of Nintendo is they're going to come out with the Super Nintendo Classic. Yeah, I don't I don't see that. If they do it, they better do it right. But honestly, I I think the whole hacking thing got them really sour, which is stupid because you're going to hack anything if you try. Oh, is yeah, that probably has a lot to do with why the NES was pulled. I my my reasoning is they just they are using all their resources to make the switch because mm -hmm. they're not a massive computer company. No, they're they're not a massive distributor like Sony. It's it's just Nintendo. Um, but if they do come out with the Super Nintendo Classic, 
Why? I mean, I get that it's going to sell well, but why wouldn't you stick with the NES then? I, you know what I would see more probable, and I kind of hope this is true, I would hope they would do uh, an NES Super Nintendo mini, like, combo thing. Like, just to save space and, like, give it a bigger memory, because you have, like, the people that remember the NES, and I, I think it was, um, I don't know if you know uh, Sean, Sean Long, you know, RGT85, me and him got into a discussion, and I, he was like, there's no reason this thing should have outsold the PS4 last month, I'm like, because 20 million people have it, and the word emulation to uh, anyone that is, like, super casual games is wizardry. So, like, <laughs> like they see a little Nintendo, and they're like, oh, that thing's cute. Like, I remember playing Kirby, and they buy it just for that. Like, they're not looking, uh, it's not meant for people like us who can emulate or buy cartridges or, like, people that care. So, like, if you have, like, a combo thing, someone who remembers the NES and the Super Nintendo, they go, oh, that thing's kind of nifty. I'll pick one up. I, I think it makes more sense. I mean, not like those games are big file sizes, you know? Just do it. <sighs> I'm... I'm hoping this isn't true. I would rather them say the NES Classic is coming back because it did sell. <laughs> it outsold modern consoles. <laughs> for, for one month. It outsold modern consoles for what? There weren't even enough to outsell modern consoles, to be fair. Oh, but still, that's it, it's it's crazy to think about. But now we're on to... Just skipping over Nintendo. They're not. Yeah, they're, they're not gonna. I mean, it's E3. They 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 do their own thing now. It's Super fine. Mario RPG two. <laughs> Don't you wish? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, the big news now is Microsoft Scorpio. You mean the Xbox two? It's gonna be a new system. There's no way this mid cycle thing is gonna keep happening. Well, it's going to be uh, more powerful, that's for sure. It might as well be a new system, a, but it's going to be a new system that plays the same games. So it's a backwards compatible Xbox 2. Yes. Man, that name sucks. Now, there are rumors that uh, that Dragon RPG is going to come back. Scalebound? Scalebound. Uh, I hope so. I don't think it'll happen. You don't think so? I don't, so now I, don't know now I bring up the game. question then. Top of your head, what games are coming out for Xbox on the horizon? Um, yep, that's all of them. They don't talk about anything. Like I, The only thing I can see is like Ge Gears of War... What are we on? Five? Gears of War 5. 343 said they weren't doing any Halo stuff. There's, like, honestly, I don't, like, oh, Crackdown. There you go. Okay, is... Crackdown and Gears of War 5, enough reason to buy another new console. No, because it doesn't make a difference because they're putting every game they put out on their platform, they're putting out on PC, so why bother? Well, let's say you don't have a PC. You're a big console gamer like myself. Okay. You're really into Xbox. I already have an Xbox One. Let's assume it broke. Am I going to spend top dollar for the Scorpio... For 4K, which, by the way, requires then a 4K TV. No. You're going to buy an Xbox at uh, One S. I'm going to buy the One S, if anything. Yeah. There's no, there's, if this is a mid I don't, I don't think anyone even cares about the PS4 Pro. I know one person that bought one. And I played... Um, I played do, do, do Battlefield 4 on it, and it looks exactly the same. He has a 4K TV. It doesn't look that much better. So if this is just no, going to be... I mean, it, it, gets, it gets to a point where the human eye can only detect so much, yeah. and the only way you're really going to be able to tell the difference is if it's side-by-side. Side. It's it's buzzwords, and the thing I fear with, with the Pro and Scorpio is that they, they keep saying, oh, it's got to play all the original PS4 and Xbox One games. It can't isolate the market, but it's going to take one game and one developer, like it's if it's Call of Duty, something it sells, they're going to go, look, we can't get this game to run on your original hardware. And then it's going to be an exclusive game, and it's just going to piss people off. So just make a whole new system. And like, I don't like that thought because I don't want upgradable boxes. I bought a console to pop a disc in and know it works. You know. I just I this is. I think it's just going to be more of the same. We're going to get exactly what we got last year at E3 in terms of Xbox, except they'll just be going over Scorpio specs. Uh, which games are going to be backwards compatible because everyone seems to care about that. 
Ooh, Sea of uh, Thieves. I want that too. Sea of Thieves is going to be... I think that's like the only one that hasn't been released yet. Right. And that's just a multi- that's a multiplayer online only game. And I and uh, that is that I don't care. is that going to be enough to sell an entire console? I don't think so. No, mostly because it, it's a new IP too, so nobody's really going to like take the risk on a game that may or may not suck. The the Switch had Zelda, and that was enough to to sell everything. Yeah, but Zelda was a massive game that people are putting hundreds of hours in, and then going, "Oh, I'm still not even done." Yeah, okay. <laughs> But, like, you know, MMOs are only as good as your friends. Like, they're only as fun as how many friends you have playing with you. And so if you're the one guy that buys Sea of Thieves, you know, what are you going to do? Sure, you can make friends online, but, you know, good luck. People online are dicks. It's, I don't know, E3 is going to be very, very different this year. Um... I've said it, I said it before. I think it's just going to be essentially what we got last year with just more information over those games that were announced. Uh, it's it's not going to be anything special. I don't see a lot of new games being announced. Ooh. Besides what we went over I know, earlier. I know one that we haven't thought of, and I saw a quick trailer for it. Remember that Square Enix was doing an Avengers game? Do you remember that small announcement or no? No. Dude, it was, it was like an announcement out of nowhere that, like, it was like a teaser trailer. Avengers and, uh, or Marvel and Square Enix have partnered up to make an Avengers game, and I swear if it's an RPG, I'm going to lose my mind. It's going to be awesome. Hmm. Oh, that would be sick. We'll see. Yeah. So that covers, that basically covers E3. Uh, what game are you looking forward to the most, honestly? Uh, that's, that's either going to be announced or coming out. Mm. Honestly? I mean, I'm going to hope and pray that Gorilla puts out a kill zone, but it's not going to happen. I'm, I accept that. No, they're done with that franchise. I know. I see Horizon Zero Dawn 2 before. I know. I'm sad. Um, before other kill zone. Nah, unfortunately. I would like to see something be done with Sly Cooper. I hope that, you know, I know Thieves in Time did okay, but I don't think it was didn't sell that great. Um, it was still a good game, though. I would, Solid. I would like to see another Tales game. I don't think it's gonna happen. No, honestly, I don't. I don't really know what I want. I would like another like, cine- not cinematic, uh, story-driven shooter to come out from somebody. Like a, uh, you know what, a Max Payne four. That's what I want. How about something realistic? Okay, Max <laughs> Payne three DLC. Uh. Mac two. Yeah. Oh, we didn't mention Days Gone. What the hell's Days Gone? So that's that. That's where I was. Uh, that's that's where I was going for before with the whole zombie shooter. That's the one where it's where you're in this open world and it's just a crap ton of zombies everywhere and they're chasing you in hordes like in World War Z. Oh, I love Dead Rising. Sweet. World War Z. Dead Rising. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I have a note. That, as interesting as the game looks, I'm not into it because it's just hordes of zombies. What I would like to see, and this won't happen at E3 because that one guy made it, but have you heard of Player Unknown Battlegrounds? No. Yeah, so it's a hundred people in a lobby, and you're all in this cargo plane, and you get dropped off on this island. Uh, you get to pick where you want to land, and it's you all start like with no weapons, so you got to go around this island, find your weapons, and it's last man standing. Interesting. I, I want a console port of that, but one guy's making the game, so he's not going to say that at E3. <laughs> It's and it, with every like increment, I think the island gets smaller too, like by force field. So if they make that happen, um, really honestly, that's like the only thing I care about. Like right now, I want that game to come to console. I want to know more about Hellblade. I want to know more about Death Stranding. Those are the two games I'm, I I care about. Ooh, Metal Gear Rising too. I want that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm being you're serious. Just asking that's for not too even, much. No, that's not even a joke. I really want that game. <laughs> A lot of people want that game, but it's not going to happen. Uh, some Lego game would be cool. Uh, like, what's a good movie that's come out that would make a Lego game? Hmm. Oh, Rogue One. We, I would do a Rogue One Lego game. What else is coming out? I could see uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Lego game coming out. I'm surprised they haven't already, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got. I don't know. I'm kind of... I'm wanting to go into E3, like, hopeful and blissfully unaware of, like, what may hit me. 
Oh, it's it's not a not, not a lot of new IPs, but um, I just want Xbox Microsoft, to do Microsoft. Something. Microsoft is going to hurt hard with this Scorpio. It might be the end. <laughs> I, I they, look. They've, they've said before that they want to get out of the console race and just make Xbox like a platform, like whether it's on PC or whatever. So fine, I'm good with that. Just make a decision already. Yeah, they're 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 treading water here, and um, I don't care because I hate Xbox. <laughs> I, I mean, fair, but I don't want to see any one of the big three go down because competition. I'd rather is... them. I but I I will say I'd rather them stay because then that leaves Sony as the sole proprietor essentially. Hey, and that's Nintendo's, that's not good for um, the industry. Nintendo's there. They um. Yeah, but they make such different games. It's not competitive. They in do. the same, it's not competitive in the same realm. I wanted an Uncharted Tomb Raider crossover. Would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know. I'm living in a fantasy world. <laughs> well, I just poured myself some new, fresh David's Tea, Golden Monkey, in case you were wondering. Golden Monkey. It's nice black tea for a nice Sunday afternoon as I, as Canada celebrates Victoria Day. <laughs> Still don't know what that is. I mean, <laughs> It's essentially Memorial Day. Got it. You guys okay. just copy our holidays, don't you? Uh, no. But, well, we're going to have our own Boxing Day. We're going to call it <laughs> Wrestling Day. <laughs> oh, I would love Wrestling Day. <laughs> Everyone just wears Speaking tights. Speaking of which, the WWE pay-per-view black, Blacklash. Wow, JD, you can't say that. <laughs> backlash is tonight. Uh, I actually, I miss watching pro wrestling. Oh. It's it's a blast. I watched uh, I watched the pay per view last night um, after coming back from Rib Fest, which is in Toronto all weekend. That, that was a that was a blast. Got super drunk, ate so many ribs, <laughs> just all day eating ribs and drinking craft beer. <laughs> well, David C does not provide craft beer, do they? David's Tea does not provide craft beer. What they do provide is because summer's around the corner, they are selling iced tea steepers. Steepers. And these the yeah so it's it's like this portable uh, iced tea maker. You you put the tea at the bottom, make your make your tea leaves. It's uh, it's really good. It's it's uh, if you spend over a hundred dollars in tea, which is really easy if you're a big uh, tea drinker like myself, you'll get it for free. While hmm. for Mother's Day uh, a couple weekends ago, they or last weekend actually, they um they were doing they had a special going on where if you spent like twenty dollars you got. Like twenty percent off the the tea steeper, so they're they're David Tea's doing a really good job with with emphasizing on iced tea this year. the The weather seems like it's going to be extremely hot everywhere except here in Canada. <laughs> yep, nope, we're in the middle of a heat wave right now, actually. Yeah, it's barely sixty five degrees here. <sighs> Damn Canada! It's not even it's not even warm enough to swim yet. <laughs> Are you even trying Canada? <laughs> Well, we got these big Great Lakes keeping the temperatures down. Those are part of America's property. Uh, so if you live anywhere near a David's Tea, I definitely recommend getting these uh, iced tea steepers or something and get get some fruity, good fruity tea for the summer. And where is David's, David's Tea located? Tea. David's Tea is located here in Toronto, all sorts of places. Their main stri- <laughs> their main location is on Queen Street. So, so when I take a trip, I'm going to you, David. Do it. They also have a couple locations in, in the Boston area. Some tea party happened there, I, I hear. Um, yeah, everyone <laughs> dressed up. It got real weird because they were all adults. Um, <laughs> it was real weird. Weird costumes. Oh, boy. America. Oh, Assassin's America. Creed had a segment on that, actually. It's, just, it's historically accurate. <laughs> well, we're approaching the hour mark here, and I believe it's time to segue into our main topic. Hey. Yeah. We played movie-based games. Why? Josh's pick. Why? Because he wants to punish us for some reason. Josh, I hate you. So instead of going round robin, uh, like snake style, we're gonna just go down go down the list to get Josh's two picks out of the way, then we'll do your two picks, and then my two picks. Because he's not even here. He's not even here, although he did give me very good notes over the games he played. I thought we escaped him. Yeah. 
we did not escape Josh. Josh is still here in spirit. If you want to follow Josh, he is currently uh, a member of Power Chord Gaming on YouTube. And he is doing a mission to play every Final Fantasy game ever made. And he streams every once in a while. And right now, he's still got working his way through the first Final Fantasy. I think he's four couple hour videos in. And he's doing a... He's, he's busting through it pretty quick, actually. Is he using a walkthrough? I watched one stream, but I couldn't tell if he was. Does it really matter? Yes. Because oh. he needs to beat them all before he's 40, so... He's... He, what he does is he's asking people online for help. Oh, okay, that's fine then. And then they pretty much tell him where to go. Yeah, because the, the... But even then, I well, I don't know. When you play an RPG, it, it's like just figuring out where to go. Instead of wandering for hours, I, I don't have an issue with looking it up. That's I, my personal opinion. I used that. a guide all through Tales of Symphonia. <laughs> <laughs> I regret nothing. Well, it's like me playing Dark Souls 3. I have the strategy guide. I'm using it. <laughs> yeah, I don't see why not. Like, <laughs> it's not cheating. You still have to do all the actions. I bought the strategy guide. I still have to do everything. <laughs> yeah. It's different in a game like I played this, um, this game Poltergeist on PS4, and the whole game is like... It's a puzzle, but all you're doing is clicking buttons. There's no real action. So, like, a game like that, I'm not going to use a guide. But I actually have mm. to do something. I'm going to use a guide. Well, you know what Poltergeist is? Uh, puzzle game. It is a game that came from a movie. Okay, hold on. You tricked me there. <laughs> it's not based off a movie. <laughs> no, it is. Poltergeist was a really good movie. No. And it holds not, up very well. Not you need this to shut one. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's Poltergeist, a pixelated horror. Poltergeist, the movie, the game. Gotcha. God damn it, Street Fighter. <laughs> All right, so our first game was Josh's uh, first pick. I, d I still don't know why he chose this topic, but I think it's because things like Ghost in the Shell came out, Assassin's Creed uh, had a movie made over the game, but we're going the other way around. These are, these are games made from movies, meaning the movies were first. <laughs> and the first game he chose was Dirty Harry. <laughs> That's what they call me down at the club. Ugh. Ooh, boy. This is a game that is on the Nintendo, and that is all I can figure out from all I played of it. <laughs> I definitely put a cartridge in, in a box, and it might have worked. Oh, I loaded up an emulator file, but still. it's Oh, boy. I don't know what... It's like... So it's kind of... From what I can decipher, it's kind of like an adventure game, like very kind of Sierra-esque with a little bit of combat, and it's just, I don't know what I was doing the whole time I played. It's extremely standard side-scrolling. It it came out in 1990 for the Nintendo NES uh, by a developer I've never heard of, Grey Matter. And that's why you never heard of them again. Uh, let's see. Did they make anything else of note? No, they did not. Great. <laughs> you tried. <laughs> Publisher by was by Mindscape. Um, man, how generic was this game? I wish I could tell you if I got past this, like the first level because I don't. I like I literally didn't know what I did. The, the platforming was stiff. I like I do. I will say I like the way that Dirty Harry just holds out his gun before I would shoot people and just be like let them miss and then fire into their face. But like oh, the boy. the platforming is like really. You remember Renegade? On NES, like, the, the combat in that was kind of stiff. Yes. That's kind of how this felt, but worse. Oh. So, there's that. I mean, you're, you're just this very generic-looking sprite with a gun that's as big as his body. <laughs> yep. he, he holds it he holds it straight out. Uh, the, the hit detection I found was impossibly just all over the place. It was not consistent. Um, your enemies consist of henchmen and snakes for some reason. Because games. You go... I mean, I, I just found myself wandering through the levels, not even worrying about the enemies. I just ran by them, go in a random building. If uh, it, Whenever the uh, henchmen would randomly respawn or spawn, just wherever, whenever they felt like it, that's when you'd have to just punch them. Right. Uh, I did find it hilarious that you have to... You go into essentially children's bedrooms and kick their dresser drawer, drawers to get crowbars. That's, which then will lead you to opening other doors. That's where I keep my crowbars, right under my son's crib. Uh, I don't have a son. Right, right, right <laughs> in his underwear drawer is where every crowbar goes. I also keep my handguns there for safekeeping, so... I mean, even even the, the sprite 
movement looked like something out of uh, I think it was uh, Karate Kid or Kung Fu. It, one of those. One of those other it looks fighting like, games. It looks like a Color Dreams game that they brought it up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nothing special. Uh, you move you what. Well, <laughs> You move along and you get better suits to unlock different abilities, which I found was really weird. I only got the white suit, and what that enables you to do is, I guess, you become a thief because now you can open safes um, to get other items. I, I I never found a safe to open. I still I still I mean I played this for a while too, and I even played it last night with a buddy of mine after Ribfest, and we're just like we don't know what's going on. You jump on a snake a couple times to kill it, they change colors. Uh, you kick the drawers, get the crowbar, open the door, more henchmen, move along. Um, I could have used yeah. the guide to get past this, but I didn't care. <laughs> like so, this is what Josh has to say about Dirty Harry. Ready for this? I am ready. The game hasn't aged well at all. Clunky, poor controls, though very standard. I know it's an NES game, but there are games that control a hell of a lot better. Jumping was annoying, and shooting was harder uh, than in Metroid, the original Metroid. Uh, the music and sounds were bad, if you can call it music. And the first boss, are you kidding me? Bullets bounce off his abs? All in all... <laughs> that makes sense. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. You shoot the middle of his body, and the bullets just come back. For whatever reason. Like, guy's that jacked, I guess. Like real bulls. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. I forgot about the first boss. <laughs> all in all, I feel like this was just another NES game that was simply made because Dirty Harry was a thing. And it was very popular. Didn't play too much farther than the first boss because I felt like I witnessed everything the game had to offer outside of all of the gun choices. You couldn't, probably weren't missing much couldn't anyway. Couldn't really <laughs> say much more than that, honestly. Um, that, pretty, that covers it. I didn't even get to the first boss, man. The game, the game wasn't good. It was, it was super standard. I don't even know if it's standard because standard means it has like some competence to it. This is like, all right, you know, all right, how, it was, you know it how was like a carbon copy of wanting to be other games. You know how he said it hasn't aged well. Yeah. Well, that's also fair, but it was also like born with birth defects, so it didn't age well with birth defects. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, Dirty Harry uh, sucks. Skip it. Skip it. It's it's not worth it. I, man, we spent what five minutes talking about it. it that was, was way more than we needed. Or or Dirty Harry, because my mom's a huge Dirty Harry fan. She grew up watching him. Like like it, it was the it's the type of infatuation. Uh, like his eyes. She that was like her crush growing up. Was freaking Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry. <laughs> you know, it's like modern day Johnny Depp kind of kind of stuff or Brad Pitt. DiCaprio in the late 90s, yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, but guess what? As long as she doesn't play the NES game, she can still live off those memories. Yeah, just just yeah, just keep it keep it in the movies. But unfortunately, this game is very skippable. I do like Josh's next game though, Akari Warriors. <laughs> it's not Akari Warriors. Yes, it, I look, I played it. It's pretty much Akari Warriors. <laughs> no, it is King Kong 2, Ikari no Megaton Punch. Look, Akari, it's in the name. <laughs> it's, we, it's so oh. stupid, it's great. This Developed is a- and published by Konami, too. It came out in 1986 on the Famicom. It didn't even make it to the, the West. Now, the, it was because of naming rights and a lot of uh, 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 movie issues and, and just, just overall issues just trying to get the game over, so we never got it. Um I do know someone with the Famicom, and this game is actually pretty fun. Yeah, it was pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's it's it was based off the movie uh, that's the, that came out the same year called called King Kong Lives, which I have seen and I love it. Super corny too. <laughs> this is like this game, it's freaking King Kong. What did you What did you think of the game? Ridiculous nonsense. <laughs> I want a remake of this on PS. You know how there's Hulk Ultimate Destruction? Like, yes. I want that, but but this game. Because it, it, it's pretty much there. Like, it's, it's almost like a precursor to that. I mean, I know Konami didn't make that one, but it, but the, it, the gameplay of it really just looks like any one of those, like, SNK or, like, like arcade, those those arcade conversions on NES. Like, I, if you didn't tell me any better, somebody, it looks like somebody went in and ROM hacked this game. It's, it's, it was, I mean, Josh picked this game just because of the name was ridiculous. And for it to actually turn out as, as pretty pretty fun was was a pleasant surprise well it's a japan made uh, game so it had more hope than like what we get for our movie license games 
I guess, because uh, I, I, I thought this game would be a side-scrolling, beat-em-up kind of style, just nothing too... I thought it would be generic, but as it turns out, it's this top-down perspective, kind of like level 2 in Contra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, or even Zelda-esque. Ikari Warriors. <laughs> Ikari Warriors would be, yeah, I mean, it's in the name, right? Did you like um, uh, Lady Kong, by the way? <laughs> Lady Kong was funny. That was great. <laughs> Winking purple or pink ape, just like yours. Yeah, upon each, upon each, uh, upon each level complete, uh, Lady Kong or Grape Ape comes on, <laughs> comes Grape on the screen ape. and shows, <laughs> comes on. Yes, did I age myself well? <laughs> no, I didn't, I never saw the movie, so I thought you made up a name. Grape Ape's a Hanna Barbera cartoon character. Oh, it is. Yeah, it shows how much I know. I'm young, JD. <sighs> I'm a boy. God damn it. I'm a boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Lady Kong was really funny. I the, the top down perspective actually worked pretty well, uh, but King Kong has one move. It's basically to punch, and then he can jump over things. But when you land with Kong, the whole screen shakes. I thought it was pretty pretty fun because I thought it was freaking out at first. <laughs> he's not a kung fu master, okay? He, it's, what do you expect him to do? King Kong's a kung fu master. He, wait, That's why he beats he, Godzilla. Up. He can all see his rocks. <laughs> He can use rocks, so that's actually a really important uh, mechanic of the game, is you pick up these these boulder icons, and that enables you to throw a rock. And you have a limited amount based on how many you pick up. It's not a terrible run-and-fight game in this instance, because as soon as you get the rocks, you you unlock a different strategy, so to say. You can you can keep your distance from enemies. You don't have to, to beat them, face them head-on, you know? And... But once you run out, especially during a boss fight, uh, you're in trouble. You really have to predict where the enemy is going to be, and if you mess that up, you lose a lot of health. That's it's, a that's a common NES problem. I had that uh, that issue in Metroid a lot too. Yeah, um, it was it was very interesting. Uh, what I didn't like is the fact that sometimes too many things were happening on the screen at once. You'd go you you would you would go up. And all of a sudden, there'd be just either too many enemies or this crazy spiral uh, rotating energy field that's moving way too fast to even try to avoid. Uh, that that gave me a lot of issues. Uh, but the, the levels were essentially like a Zelda dungeon. Which I thought like was actually even, creative, because you could have just made... Like you said, you could have made this a 2D like, side-scroller, but they actually put effort into it. It almost feels like they had another game plan, and they were like, King Kong's popular, guys. They're like, yeah, sure, why not? You know what? That wouldn't shock me, mm. um, that it was made in the same engine. I mean, I swear I was even hearing the same music from Legend of Zelda. Eh, maybe. We should look at it. I swear. This. I swear I was hearing it. <laughs> you probably could. You probably uh, got so entr- entranced, and you were like, this is Zelda... <laughs> I do that when I play like Ocean Horn or Dark Siders. I had like this yeah. sounds like Twilight I wanted Princess. I wanted to keep playing it, but you only have the one life or the the limited amount of lives, and it's game over, and you have to start the game over. So I was, Not I was if you save sad. states. Well, if you save states, another another time. Because I'm a dirty cheater. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the, that was my only hang up about the game. If it, if it didn't, if it if it had anything like what Zelda had with you, you know, you can continue off and go uh, consistently, then I think it would have been even better. But, man, this is this is a game that the West really missed out on. Okay. There's so many games that, like, like it's one, things like this where I'm like, man, there is no reason. Isn't King Kong, like, mostly an American thing anyway? No, it's Japanese, man. Is it? I thought King Kong was, like, American thing. No. Well, I lied. Never mind. <laughs> well, I mean, there was the 20s one, and then, and then there's the 20s movie. That made King Kong, and then Japan just took it to another level. Right, but I'm saying, like, it's an American franchise okay. it started at. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah, it's it's an American... Pro- I mean, it's owned by Universal, so that's... The fact that a King Kong game was made in Japan, that's where I was I was mentioning earlier that yeah. we didn't get it, probably because Universal wanted... You know, they have the naming rights, so that's why we didn't get it. Yeah, it's like when they got they that exclusive Star Wars game to Japan, I'm like, but that's our thing, like, why do you have that? <laughs> so, Josh's notes say as I'm The Matrix was a documentary right here. Uh, Illuminati's real. That we know, Josh. 
So, here we go. King Kong 2, Hujuki, no Fluky, Punchy, Thingy, NES, Famicom, oh, Konami. Uh, this right is actually all. a sequel. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, he laughed out loud when he found out the description, even harder when I saw the opening cutscene. Though, when I started to listen to the music and sound effects, I knew I was in for a treat. I started to take the game a bit more seriously and was immediately surprised by how much better this controlled than the other game I picked, Dirty Harry. <laughs> Uh, the combat was surprisingly fluid and kind of satisfying when you crushed the blob enemies into hearts or rubble. Though, to be honest, this game reminded me a lot of Zelda. Damn it. I thought I was going to say Car Wars. <laughs> the labyrinth parts were a bit annoying and only takes away... The only, the only takeaways I had from the game were the timing you needed to hit enemies without getting hit. And that's what I was talking about earlier. And if you killed an enemy by the edge of the screen, you couldn't pick up the item because it was too close to the edge. You could just advance uh, to the next screen. Another yeah, and I found that game. I found that out a lot. Yeah, if you just do not kill enemies at the sides of the screens, because every every item drop will you won't be able to get it, and that that was a major hindrance to like getting your boulders to to, to throw the rocks at enemies, uh, health pickups. It was yeah. That was a Zelda. Injuries. That was a Zelda issue too. But the only thing is, you had the sword, so you can like stab it, and it somehow worked. Yeah, King Kong just had his little punch. He, so. he tried, but not much. Which not much reach. Which again, it was pretty tough to to not get hit. You really had to. He's to a big plan sprite, out though. each attack. He's a huge sprite in the game. <laughs> he shakes the screen, Kevin. <laughs> He's pretty epic, though. <laughs> oh man! So if you have a fam uh, a Famicom. Definitely pick this game up. Or the internet. For sure. Or the internet. Emulators. Oh, Famicom. You need a Famicom. Emulate. I mean, I'm sure you could get a uh, a Famicom and then have it modded so it could also play NES games. There's, there's many ways to play it, but play it for free. Piracy, don't do that. Support your local no. stores. No, definitely go... I would definitely uh, go to a used retro store, and if they have Famicom games, look this up immediately. This was a lot of fun. I bet the cartridge is pink. Yeah, it's red. Oh, so close. Damn I think it. it's red. I think it's red. I wish we got colored cartridges here. Yeah, so thanks, Josh. The uh, the funny title game ended up being a lot of fun. I mean, it could not be funny. <laughs> oh, man. Funny, good. Whatever word I meant to say. I just thought about that. <laughs> so, Kevin, the next game is your pick. Which one's on the list first? Uh, some Star Wars funky game that you picked. Super Return of the Terminator. Got it. Super Return of the Terminator <laughs> Wars. <laughs> so I picked Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Um, I also picked this out of convenience because it was our game club's game of the month. Um, so oh, that's fine. Yeah. That so works. I was like, well, I'm doing that. Um, this game's stupid hard. It's unfairly hard. Like I know all the super, the Super Star Wars games are hard. But even with save states, I still had to put on infinite lives for this game. <laughs> Just so you could get anywhere? It was impossible. Like, and and it, it taunts you because... Well, uh, so the first level you get to choose between Leia, um, I think Han Solo, I don't think I had Chewbacca, and Luke Skywalker. Obviously, I'm going to pick Luke Skywalker. So, like you... It's Leia, it's Leia, Luke, and Chewie. It was Chewie, the first <laughs> level. Oh yeah, because Hans and Carbonite. That's right. So it's it's like the the movement is real good. It, like Luke moves very swiftly. Like when you do the double jump, he does like a flip in the air and he like does his cartwheel with his lightsaber, and he's hitting a lot of things. But at the same time, you're also taking a lot of damage. <laughs> so, and then like it it, it teases you again because you mostly kill the enemies and they drop a little heart, which mm -hmm. gives you life. But it's almost not enough. So then you're like, just take all this damage, and then you die. And you're like, all right, I'll try again. And then you try with like, maybe I'll be Chewbacca this time. But for some reason, when you jump with Chewbacca and you're shooting, he likes to crouch when he lands. So it's like, it, do I want to play the lightsaber with the range or the gun? Then Chewie moves weird, and then you die with Chewie. So you're like, I'll be Leia. And then Leia just sucks, so she dies. And then you die, and then you die. I'm having flashbacks to Alien Trilogy again, or whatever I played. <laughs> It's just, it's such a good game. It's one of those games where, like, it's stupid hard, but it it's just good, and I wanted to keep trying. And I got a little further, a little further, and then I save-stated, and then 
uh, I picked up from there. And then the levels were almost a little too vertical for me. Where, like, I, I got lost where I was supposed to be going. I, th- I thought I was going left to right for a while, but then I, I would hit a dead end. Oh, where, where, where to go in the game wasn't quite clear for me at all. Especially at the Ewok uh, village. <laughs> well, so, it took a little while for me to grasp what I was supposed to do in the game. But first of all, it's developed by uh, Sculptured Software and Real-Time Associates. Mm-hmm. And published by uh, JVC, actually. Yep. Wait, uh, really? THQ for the Super Nintendo, yeah. I was going to say, I just looked at the box. It was re-released by, by JVC. Gotcha. I, I have a yeah. THQ box behind me. I found a good one. Yeah. Uh, it came out in 1994, and it was actually awarded Best Movie to Game in 1994. To be fair, that's not a hard category to win. So how many Movie to Games were there in 1994? I don't know. They did the other Star Wars movies. Why not? Oh, uh, oh boy. So, I mean, the game was is ridiculously hard. All the Super Star Wars games are. Uh, of course, if you can even get to the boss, because the bosses are notoriously easy in the games. Yeah, um, I'm going to argue that. Uh, in this one, they are stupid hard. Like, the first boss took, like, at least 100 hits before he dropped down to his, like, first dot. Like, I was playing a normal, so then I cranked it to easy, and then they were, like, too easy, so I couldn't find, like, an in-between. See, I played on easy because the game was... was j- I wanted to play more of the game. <laughs> yeah. So I had to... I had to crank it easy, I, and I feel I did bad. find I did find a little trick, though. What's that? You're meant to play the game in order of the movie... Uh, releasing plot. So you're not actually supposed to play, like, Chewie first. You're supposed to play as Leia. Then why give me the choice? Just so, just to give you... Just to give, give you that Mega Man feel. No, no, no. See, the way the... The, the game was so much easier, uh, at least I got a little bit farther than normal, because it's like, oh, okay, what happened first in the movie? Well, Luke's frozen in... Or, uh, Han is frozen... Is it Luke? Han? Han. Han's frozen in... in Carbonite, so, okay, what happens first? Oh, Leia has to go rescue him, and she's dressed up as, uh, what's-his-face? I, uh, I, purple guy. Um. Can't remember his name either. I have his, I have his name written down in my notes. Uh. The thing is, what would have been, like, uh, Leia, Leia Bush, which is the bounty, her bounty hunter name. But it could have been easier if, start me out on this level, I'm Leia, and then if I beat the game, like, be like, hey, you want to go back and play as this person? I mean, I know they didn't have a save feature in Super Nintendo, but, like, you know, at least remember that I unlocked that or something. I don't know. I, I, I No, I mean, once you... You gotta, you gotta play it in the order of the movie. I don't remember the movies. Well, maybe you should watch Return of the Jedi no, again. I, I want to play video games. I want to watch <laughs> movies. So I found the, the, the jumping mechanics very strange, and the hit detection was just brutal. Especially on the bosses. Yeah. Well, I mean... The first couple bosses weren't that bad. Maybe that's why I'm I'm in that realm of the boss battles weren't too difficult. But since you played basically the the last part of the game <laughs> first, that's why it was that's why it was even harder. I'll live with that. Right? I just I I didn't like how, like now that I know that I feel stupid. Um which yeah, I feel really stupid that the game could have been a lot easier for me. And I only played the first Super Star Wars because I wanted to play them in order. So well, it reminded it reminded me a lot of Gunstar Heroes, where you don't have to play that first level first. You can true. play any of them first, and then you can develop a strategy. Is like okay, if I do this first, that'll make the rest of the game a lot easier because I'll have you know whether it's more health or you know more upgrades. Um, this game reminded me a lot of Earthworm Jim, just not in, not as interesting because it didn't have the comedy or anything carrying it. Yeah, that's true. It felt very generic. Because Earthworm Jim had interesting backgrounds and uh, interesting environments to play, a lot of interesting enemies. This one was just... It felt like it was a carbon copy of other uh, Super Jedi games. How did you feel about the first level immediately being a driving segment? I didn't catch that. Say it one more time. How did you feel about the first level being a driving segment right away? Oh, that was funny. It was. It felt like F-Zero. <laughs> Really? Because I thought I was like, well, this isn't how I wanted to be sucked into your game. Like, no, 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 no. It was it was very odd. There's it was that... a very odd way to start start the game. Did you get to the end of the game at all? Or no? Oh, not a chance. Are you kidding me? So, <laughs> towards the end of the game, I kill Vader, right? And then I fight the the Emperor. I died a couple times, and then so you went straight. You went straight 
save state because oh, yeah. if you play it on the Super Nintendo like I did, it's yeah, it's, no, you don't have a chance. I, if I had the cartridge, I would have played on the on the Retron and save state it anyway. Wow. Um, but so the final segment of this game. Now I want you to remember, we're playing with the 16-bit Super Nintendo graphics. You have to escape the Death Star through a tiny, tiny opening. So if you if you want to look up some footage of this, because I can't even explain it, it's it's like a bunch of squares mashed together, super zoomed <laughs> in, and there's a black square in the center, and you have to keep the Millennium Falcon. It might you're in first person view, not through the window, but like just it's just dead on, like the screen is coming at you. And the the shoulder buttons rotate the Millennium Falcon in a way. So you have to keep yourself dead center in this while it's exploding. Trying to escape the Death Star, and after my 40th time dying, I was like, you know what? I bet they get out, and it's gonna be fine. And so I just shut the game off. Like, it, it'll it'll only <laughs> it'll only justify it. If Something you, tells me they they made it. <laughs> it'll only justify it if you watch like the last level be played. Like I looked up a guide to see if there's something I was doing wrong, and, the, and, the, and this guy's guide just goes. Yeah, just get out of the Death Star. Like, he didn't describe how to beat it. He's just like, yeah, just hit Y and B a oh lot, and eventually God. you'll probably get out. <laughs> like, that was like my... that's That was like my view in, in uh, not being able to beat Ninja Gaiden 2. Yeah. I'm like, well, I failed to beat the final boss. I guess evil reigns supreme. No, no, no. <laughs> like, I, I beat the Emperor. The Death Star's exploding. Like, you could have just made this a cutscene. Like, I, whatever. I'm at it. I beat this game. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Beat it, I, dude, dude, I'm telling you, just watch the final level be played, and I'm sure right, the guy. I'm looking, I'm looking that up because I, 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 later, I I'll look it up later. Yeah. It's, it sounds ridiculous. It's the. It's like somebody I really zoomed wish in the in game Star was Fox. easier. I really wish the game was easier. Yeah, that would be playable. <laughs> the game wasn't bad. It's not the worst movie game I played. It's. That's Alien Resurrection. Ugh. Yeah, that was from the that was from the last uh, episode. <laughs> Throwback. So let's see what Josh had to say. Mr. Power Cord, I spend time with my family on Victoria Day weekend. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, nerd. What a nerd. <laughs> what a what a mark. Steals lunch okay, money. Okay, so <clears throat> was really thrown off at the beginning with the flying, and I couldn't figure out how to jump until I died like ten times. But still pretty simple in the end once you got it. I was surprised by how well the characters moved and was really surprised how the levels were designed. We have different opinions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really large, weren't linear per se, didn't just run to the end basically, and still pretty challenging for a run and, run and gun type game. Uh, you didn't you didn't tell me I was platforming. I liked the variety of characters I was given. It was nice because the characters felt like they were different. So it sounds like Josh actually quite enjoyed it. It's a decent game, so you know what? I'm going to decide. Uh, so I guess the, the, the fact that it wasn't just straight side to side, he quite enjoyed, which I can definitely see that. I get it, but it was so cryptic sometimes. Like, climbing the last level, I felt like I went backwards and then magically the game loaded a new area. <laughs> well, naturally, since it's a Super Nintendo game uh, that was released with a major franchise, you can get this on the Wii Virtual Console now. Wait, you can? Yeah. Hmm, I thought they, I wasn't aware it was on there. Well, go play it, people. Yeah, huh. so that's one way to get it. It was re-released um, with simplified versions on the uh, the Game Gear and the Game Boy, so eat, eat some batteries, I suppose. Ooh. I wish they would release the other ones, because I know they when Battlefront came out, EA put out the first Super Star Wars on Vita and PS4, but not the others. Very weird. But that was definitely a game. Yeah, I mean, if you're re- heavy into the Star Wars franchise, the, the game's the game's okay. I'm, I wouldn't play it more outside of what we just did. Yeah, I'm pretty good with it for the rest of my life. Yeah. So our next game is your second pick. Yeah, I did this one because uh, uh, I I didn't veto it. Well, even I, though I should have, I picked it because it's in, like it's interesting that it exists, but also for time constraint reasons. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean it's a quick pick up and play, that's for sure. And that was uh, all I needed. What's the game called? Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Yeah. So basically, 
we try to stay outside of anything earlier than the NES. I'm not allowed to pick games anymore, he said. After picking this one, this is a <laughs> prime example of why that rule should be uh, well, 100% something. instated. We learned something now, didn't we? Kevin doesn't listen to your nerdy rules. <laughs> now, this game is... um. I mean, there's an AVGN episode on it, so you can see everything you need to see. But you essentially play as Leatherface, and you're in this magic open field, and your whole goal is to murder schoolgirls with a um, a blue chainsaw with lumps on it that I can't really figure out why it is the way it is. But man, it is it is a monotonous fucking game. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's your typical Atari game when, when games were just simply made to be exist, I suppose. Yeah, games were in a different realm of like, eh, get a score and shut it off and go outside and play soccer when you're bored, kid. Did you find when this game even came out? I bet it's in Josh's notes. I am gonna bet, without looking it up, 1981. Nope, 19, uh, I'm guessing 1982. So it was, it was, uh, it looks like it was made by Wizard Video and it came out in 1983. Damn it. Yeah. I tried. Wizard video. That doesn't ring any bells. <laughs> it, it's it's a weird... It's just... The, the thing is, like, I know they were trying to go for, like, oh, you're the... Mur-. Like, it's weird that you're the bad guy, first off, in an Atari game, but... Yeah, that is kind of weird. It's just... It's a program terribly, because when I'd go to, like, Chainsaw, the, the kids or whatever the hell I'm doing, like, they would, like, glitch behind me, and then you'd have to, like, go back and forth real quick, almost every time. <laughs> Uh, and, and there's just random stuff lying around, and if you touch it, you you are screwed. You cannot pass it. <laughs> yeah. So if a single pixel, so basically it's it's this side to side view of Leatherface, and the screen's con- consistently moving, uh, like it's on, almost on a track, a treadmill track. Defender like. There's random bikes and other random items that that come across the screen, and your objective is to avoid them in order to then get to the little schoolgirl to kill. Uh, but if, if, if a single pixel of your sprite hits any of those items that are coming uh, across the screen, your character stops on a dime. He's frozen, essentially. It's all over. I said, it's, it's almost like the game might, it might as well have been over. Yeah, and then the, the, the game over screen is really odd, where, the school, where a schoolgirl will kick him in the butt, <laughs> Best game over ever. <laughs> uh, that was that was odd, um, but it was great. I mean, it's an Atari game. Uh, I the fact that the chainsaw was the same color as his body was really odd. So it looked like his shirt was just sticking out. Yeah, and, shirt. That's what I went with too. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a shirt. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> shirt. But, Penis. Okay. <laughs> that. The chain run the, the the chainsaw runs out of fuel, and I'm not sure why that's even a mechanic in the game, other than just to have you game over quicker. Yeah, it's a timer. <laughs> so you're just trying to get as many points until your fuel runs out, or you end up getting kicked in the butt. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I it, it was Atari was all based around that arcade mentality, so they had to have a reason for you to like risk first reward, like do I use a chainsaw? Or do I conserve it and try to hit the girls exactly when? But the game's programmed so badly that, like, you're not going to hit them the first time, you know? Right. The game is terrible. Uh, Come on. The, 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 worst, the worst thing about the game, the worst thing in the game is you get, the only sound you get is the chainsaw going, and then all of a sudden, every, like, ten seconds, or less, less, in fact, you get this high-pitched beep. That's the screen. It's, it's mm, yes, yeah, sure, okay. It is. <laughs> I don't buy that for a second. Well, it doesn't buy you. I don't buy it for a second. I think I think it's just a, a high pitch beep that's meant to make your ears bleed. <laughs> you, you are being too harsh on. Oh no, this game shit. I'm being way too harsh on no, Texas Chainsaw game, Massacre for this, the Atari. This game shit. It's real bad. <laughs> so Josh's notes. Oh boy. <clears> Him. <throat> Not really much to say about this, more or less the controversy behind it. Retailers did not want to sell the game because they thought that a game with Leatherface was too violent. Wonder why. 
The game itself is simple. Kill tourists on your property and don't run out of fuel. <laughs> I, looked up, I looked up how much this game costs. Too much. On eBay. Limited release. Mmm, that's always good. Atari, $300. This game costs. That sounds about right. $300. Yeah, worth it. Worth every penny. 10 out of 10. I don't have an Atari. What I do have is an emulator an with an emulator for Atari games. <laughs> and nothing. You, you missed out on nothing. I missed out on garbage. <laughs> what was that? It, look, they tried, okay? Garbage. You hear me? Garbage. Gar- Never play this game again. Okay, hold on. I would play it for a laugh really drunk. No. Okay, well, nope. I'll go fuck myself. Nope. nope, I played this game for like 10 minutes and I was done. <laughs> Obligatory photosynthesis joke. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I would rather go outside and soak in all of the photosynthesis to, to, to get energy to play the next game. From our new sponsor, JD's Photosynthesis Factory. Are you feeling low on sun? I got nothing are You feel? Are you feeling low on energy? Become a plant. <laughs> <laughs> Just say screw it. Don't play this game. Become a plant. Oh, God. So now we're into my picks. My two picks. Yes. Yeah. And knowing me, <laughs> there's like two consoles I like to pick from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is. You need to diversify. No, because you guys won't diversify. <laughs> okay, hold on. I did diversify. I picked Atari. And I'm, yeah, not, I'm not allowed again. to have fun anymore. You're not allowed to do that ever again. You suck. <laughs> so my first pick was Batman and Robin on the PlayStation. Ugh. You love me. I, I It was graphically <laughs> impressive. Does that count? Oh, man. You could see George Clooney's bat nipples, just like the movie. Oh, yeah, that was that was the George Clooney one, wasn't it? Bat nipples. They had to be on the suit. <laughs> so it's based off it's based off the movie of the same name that came out in the early, uh, no, the late, mid to late 90s? It came out in the 90s. <laughs> The movie came out in, what, 96? Yes. So that'd be mid-90s, and when you get past that, it's the late 90s. It's, uh, 97. Mid-90s? Not 97. So. Well, the game came out in, the game came out in 1998, so late 90s. Right. And it was, uh, developed by Probe Entertainment and yeah. Tiger Electronics. Oh, good. ha uh-huh. ha Uh, published by Acclaim. Oh, better. And it's a straight-up Warner Brothers game. Hard. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I, like I said, it's graphically impressive. No, it was. I was quite surprised with a lot of a friend, a friend that came over last night. We played this. I had to show him the game. I go, okay, this game is not very good, but keep an open mind and tell me what this game reminds you of of modern games today. Because uh, it was, as you play it, you realize how ambitious the game was. Yeah, sometimes ambition's left doing nothing though. Uh, I, I, if this came, if this same game was released today, it or even like fun. five years later, it would have been fantastic. It's very Arkham Knight esque. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. I'm like, wow, you get, you have sandbox elements to the game, you have real time events, you have Batman's uh, head sticks out of the Batmobile. Yeah, I mean, well, he he teleports outside the Batmobile. It's more Ah. more like it. Uh, You you have a driving part of the game where you're driving the Batmobile around town. There's a civilian population in it. Uh, They're they're evil henchmen trying to kill you, but that's that's part of the game. Um, You get to choose between any of the three heroes, Batman, Robin, Batgirl. So Batman drives the Batmobile, Robin drives the motorcycle, and Batgirl uses the bat... Blade? Bat Kitchen. Yes. Hey, oh, I'm joking. You just go, and, and the whole game is is focused around trying to uh, stop Mr. Freeze from, like, robbing places, essentially. The whole game's about Mr. Freeze, and it's got Arnold quotes galore. <laughs> Which I love. <laughs> it was really funny. The opening line, okay, I wrote this down, because I cracked up. Uh, Tonight's forecast, a freeze is coming. <laughs> and it's classic. 
Uh, first of all, uh, 100% nailed that Arnold impression. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I thought Arnold was here with us. I mean, you, you'd think I just took the audio from the movie, but oh, that was actually, oh, that no. was actually me, 100%. I felt no digital noise. That was his voice. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but where the game fails is the fact that it's so detective-based. We're randomly clicking on these clues you find across the levels, and you put together where Mr. Freeze is robbing and how you're supposed to prevent him from doing it. The loading screens are insane. insane. They're like it feels like they're every ten seconds. Oh, insane! And it takes thirty uh, seconds frequently. to load. I was gonna say like they weren't that great. They were just static. Like, <laughs> I mean, it took. I think it was 10 minutes before the game really got going, and I, I think it was six loading screens. That's too much. That's way too much. It was it was, it was was really killing it. Um, this was released... I wanted to bring this up again. Uh, this was released three years ahead of Grand Theft Auto 3, and when you were driving, there was actually a map with the objectives and where to go. It's it, like, it, like You're right. It's impressive for what it was, and I... I wanna... every, every Everything the game was doing felt like it was released three to five years ahead of time. And it just needed to sit and bake for three to five years. Th- nothing says you have to put a game out when the movie comes out. And I know people want to do it. It's obviously capitalized on sales. But those few movie like the Warriors, you know, when you bake a game for a while and you really get a concept going, like, that game could have benefited from the same treatment. Yeah. Uh, once I got past that first, like, ten minutes of gameplay, it wasn't the worst game I've ever played. No, it wasn't the best. But it wasn't the best, because the controls are extremely clunky. You have to line yourself up with everything. Uh, and controls. Yeah. It was... I don't know why... I. It was right on the cusp <laughs> of, of trying to figure out that second analog stick. I also love the way Batman walks where, like, his head is tilted slightly up, so he's just like, don't mind me, I'm Batman. Just coming to punch you <laughs> Batman in the face. Batman over here. Don't worry, and I'm he, turning left, I think. Nope, that was right. I'll when, turn around. Back up. <laughs> when he jumps into an enemy, he's just like, my chest. Eat the bat nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Eat the bat nipple. Oh, God. Game's the great. non-stop repeated environments made made the game pretty monotonous uh, pretty quickly, actually. Uh, the sound effects were terribly irritating, the fighting standard. But, again, for the time, actually very surprising. Because the more I kept thinking about it, I'm like, man, I can't think of a game before this that even attempted anything like this. And I can think of so many games after it that looks like it took all the elements from this with moder- with with modern graphics of the or modern gameplay and graphics of the time it's very it's so close to being good which sucks it's just like it looks good the idea is good and then you play it and you're like oh you're like man so much is here and, but, and it, it just couldn't it wasn't capable of doing it at the time it's not about who who does it first though it's about who did it best so this right. is, this is a great start for the Arkham games but you know. you know, you know, we went over it when we were doing um, uh, first-person shooters with Medal of Honor. Yep, that was the game that did it first, and it and it it didn't do it the best, but I think it it's the most fun I've had in a shooter in a long time. This just it's it got irritating way too quick. It's better than Batman Forever, though, right? Oh, a lot of things are better than that game. <laughs> Uh, I did find it funny that the enemies exploded like a pane of glass. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the cool part. I thought that, I thought that made it way more redeemable. <laughs> oh, the, the platforming on the boxes. Uh, just the way he jumped from box to box in that game. <laughs> it, just, it, was, it was a rough time. It, he doesn't even, like, animate. He just, like, lifts up and then falls in the box. He's like, yep, I did that. <laughs> yep, that was me. Batman did it. I'm Batman. <laughs> oh, boy. So, Josh's notes, first of all, sick cover art. Yeah. Seriously, though, this game sucked. <laughs> okay, good, good, Josh. Thanks for the talk. <laughs> uh, combat was clunkly, uh, clunk, clunkly and slow, and the enemies were impossible to hit if they kept running around you. 
trying to switch from detective mode to combat was really annoying, especially if enemies were around you and you couldn't change if you were in combat. Couldn't be, couldn't agree more. Yeah. The only interesting thing I could take away from this game was that the things was were, uh, were based on a time and not triggered. So you were you were t- you were on a time frame. So you could stop Mister Freeze in time, uh, meaning you had to finish a certain mission in a certain time frame or you'd fail. So that was pretty neat. It was cool to be able to play Robin and Batgirl as well. But who would want to play a sidekick number one? And tank controls were so bad. Why would you be sidekick number two and even get that far? Should not be done with action games. It shouldn't be done at all. To be fair, I I just I'm I'm wondering if the decision to have the tank controls uh, was because they didn't know that you could use the analog stick to control a camera at the time. No, that well, I mean, we keep talking, about it, but Alien Resurrection was the first game that did that, and they f- like got it right. I wish other games like followed suit. I think it came out first, actually. No, no, it didn't. Mm, Alien Resurrection was 99, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I thought about it. Yeah. So, man, imagine if this game came out even a year later. If it just sat and baked, man. I, I really wish this was like a PS2 game. But you got... you get, But but this is where movie games um, falter, is they gotta, they gotta make that, that cash cow immediately when the movie comes out. I know. But GoldenEye waited, and like, how nice do people remember GoldenEye, you know? Was GoldenEye in the 90s? GoldenEye came out way the after the movie. Like, two two or three years after. Okay. And well, it, I mean, Nintendo did, Nintendo does things differently. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, how, how long after did uh, Return of the Jedi come out after that movie? <laughs> 20 years? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm not saying it works every time. I'm saying it works 17% of the time. <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately, as as I would say innovative and uh, ambitious as Batman and Robin was on the PlayStation, the tank controls and loading screens for me personally were the uh, were the top two that prevented everything from happening and coming together to make a good game. I'm gonna try this transition thing you've been doing all day. Ready for this? As dark. And gritty Batman was. Predator Two was on the Genesis. I tried. I, you're. I, I tried. I'm not good at this. You're idea. awful. You're an awful Shut person. Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah, you're just the worst. Yeah, no. Oh God. Okay. Genesis. Predator Two. Genesis does. What Nintendo don't? <laughs> I wish they said that part. How did you, did you like Predator Two? So we did. We've done Alien, done Dirty Harry. We've done Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What's left in the franchise? Well, what's left in in horror and action? Well, Predator, obviously. <laughs> no, what was that? Oh crap, I can't remember. Unfriended. That's the movie game we need. <laughs> Unfriended, the movie game. Hell yeah! Oh, Text boy. adventure. That would be interesting. Yeah, so this is the last title we're going over. It's it's uh it was my my last pick, my second one. It's uh, Predator Two, and it came out on the Sega Genesis because gotta pick my Sega games. <laughs> no, you. Because nobody else will. I would too. Oh God. Uh, game adaptation film, the same title. Um, obviously, when did the movie come out? Uh, eighty. I'm gonna f- the second. I'm gonna say- second movie. I want to see 1990. Oh, I was Came out in 1990. Came out in 1990. So this was a couple years after that. Uh, the game was released in 1992. Uh, developed by Teeny Weeny Games. Wait, excuse me? <laughs> Teeny Weeny Games. Chrysala Software, Acclaim Grey Team, and Perfect 10 Production. So wow, how ironic. a lot of people involved, and I'm not really sure why. Well, there's uh, probably a lot of movie licensing, so they wanted to get like everything right. and you know, Sure. Too many sure. cooks Publish- in the kitchen. Yeah, it was a published by basically Acclaim. Um, it did have a Master System release, which don't play. Uh, oh, it did okay. have a Game Gear release, don't play. Come on! <laughs> uh, they're impossible. Yeah, fair. Just couldn't keep up with what the game was. And uh, that's 
that's that's fairly common for a lot of Genesis games that were released on the pre, on the Master System. I mean, they had to try just to do it. I think Altered Beast is a good example of that. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's a good game on everything. For the Genesis, it is. Shh. <laughs> it's good on the Nintendo, too. Uh, so this game wasn't actually all that bad. No, it was pretty average. Uh, above average, I'd say, actually. Uh, yeah, above average, I would I would stick, w- stick with it. You So you immediately start off shooting drug dealers and saving ho- hostages that essentially look like crackheads to me. Uh, yep. <laughs> that's, a, yep. Hey, that's a good way to put it, actually. Fair statement, yeah. It reminded me a lot of... Uh, Alien Syndrome, which we played on our first episode. Yeah, that's actually where you're what running. You're running around a top, top, top view level, uh, saving people scattered throughout, and he essentially getting to the end. I love that game. Yeah, what was strange about the game though was uh, you enter the house of these drug dealers, and no, I'm sorry, you don't. Ent- that was Dirty Harry. You're running around the level, and you have to actually shoot at the doors because drug dealers are constantly coming out of them. Mm-hmm. That was irritating. They're everywhere in this game. That's where that's where the game reminded me a lot of Smash TV. It, it, you're just constantly shooting everywhere. It it actually I'm glad you said it. I'm getting like Alien Syndrome versus Smash TV kind of vibe, and this with a little yeah. bit of like the Contra overhead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A top down view. So. Well, actually, it was more isometric. In parts. Yeah. So you just you just spam the shoot button, focus on the doors. Um, the sound changes on direction. If that do you do you remember playing it? You know, you would yeah. you, whenever you would change direction, it seemed like the sound would get kind of funky and it, it's almost overloaded. Like the Genesis yeah, it was, like... it was it was pretty random. I didn't really like the sound in this game at all. I I had to basically put it on mute. Uh, when I was playing this game with a friend last night, uh, he thought that the game was taking a lot of mechanics from uh, Chikan the Forever Man. I know that game in name only. Yeah, and then a lot of the Jedi games on the Super Nintendo, which we played earlier. Oh. Mentioned earlier. I mean, I, it's hard to compare those two because this is so top-down, like, a totally different gameplay, like, angle, so... Stretch, I guess. Mm. I kind of. I, I could see it because I've played. I've I've played. I've I've seen videos over Chikan. Um, it's a hard game for sure. It's very hard. Uh, this game's like. I could really definitely hard. see. I could definitely see the platforming mechanics of of uh, Return of the Jedi in this game. It's good. It's just the. It's it's got that old game problem. Of, like this is unnecessarily hard for no reason other than to be hard. But uh, I had fun with it. It's just it's the only thing is like it could have been better, and I feel like the license actually held it back. I did I did find myself getting bored of the levels because mm-hmm. they're very repetitive. It was it was very just run and gun. Um, I wasn't too into it after a while, uh, although it was really cool that it's it's seemingly every different area you would go to it would show the predator and it's kind of stalking you but that's all at the same i feel time. like the connection between this and predator is like i don't think this had to be a predator game it felt like it was supposed to be something and they just slapped predator on it and i that seems to be a theme with a lot of these movie games at least the earlier ones yeah. It's easy to make sprite work games and just be like, uh, the Predators, it's Predator 2. Look, this guy looks like Arnold, right? Right? Although the the mechanic w- with the Predator really got you thinking of the game differently. Because there's this three-dot reticle, the Predator reticle, and it's stalking you across the screen as you're moving. And you have to save the hostages before the reticle goes on him, because the Predator, he, he knows no mercy. He kills everybody. Uh, he will actually, the reticle will go to the hostage uh, if you're not quick enough and kill them. It and really they happens. essentially, they essentially just blow up. It's just bam, huge, like movie type stuff. That was cool. Yeah, but I feel like that never really happened. Like, it was kind of like a, an idea mechanic that never really, I never had that issue. Like, But that does because. happen. That can happen in the game, which is pretty wild. Hmm. Yeah, other than that, your purpose besides just saving the hostages isn't really all that clear. I guess you're just a cop, 
and you're running around getting getting them. I mean, and avoiding the predator. That's about it. Uh, there's not much depth to the game at all. I was kind of sad because immediately upon playing, I was like, wow, okay, this might not actually be too bad. And it wasn't, but it doesn't have that staying power to make me interested in finishing it, continue playing it. It just doesn't uh, need to be a, a Predator game. The more, like, the more I played it, I was like, other than, like, the reticle and Predator stalking me at the beginning of the level, I was just like, yeah, okay, this could have been anything. I wouldn't even, I mean, it was, I'd call it Total Recall if I didn't know any better. <laughs> Total Recall. Yeah, it could easily have been that. So Josh's notes, uh, Predator 2 for the Genesis. Big surprise, JD. Ha! <laughs> Ooh. It was actually kind of refreshing to play a game like this. They tend to control nicely, and it was nice not to have to worry about ammo management. I thought it was a really cool idea to try to save hostages, not only from the drug lords, but also the Predator. It actually confused me when one of the hostages exploded, and then I noticed the red dots floating around. The music was nice, and not too distracting, and all in all, a good movie ap- adaptation. Yeah. It, or a good game adaptation of a movie. It's probably what he meant to say. Good game, bad game adaptation. Yeah, it, it's not the worst game for sure. It's nothing special. I found after a level or two. It's not. I, I would recommend it. Like if you see it for like I don't know. I wouldn't go more than like seven ninety five, American. Yeah, it's not that. It's not. It's not expensive at all. It's a. It's a cheap buy. But it's a buy. It's a buy. Um, so I th- it sounded like uh, Predator 2 was Josh's favorite game on the list. Just judging by uh, his his notes that he gave me. You cut out there for a second. I thought I lost you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jo- Josh, Josh it's, it seems to me Josh liked Predator 2 the most. So, What game uh, on the list was your favorite? It's a tie between... Predator 2 and Return of the Jedi, but I think Predator 2 wins because it wasn't, un- like, stupidly hard. But it, it was, was more hard. palatable. Yeah, it was hard. And then, so there's Predator 2, Return of the Jedi, and then number three, I want to say Batman or Robin just because the potential was there. The ambition was there. Yeah. I, I'm a, I'll do a top three. All right. Uh, my top three is pretty easy. Predator 2. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Number 3 is uh, Return of the Jedi, just because it was the most palatable game, uh, even though it was hard. Uh, yeah, Predator yeah. 2 is number 2, because it was the easiest, but it got pretty boring. My number one's actually King Kong 2. Yeah, the game was just weird. <laughs> but it's cool. The game was weird, but it, it was the most fun. I had the most fun with it, and the fact that it's only on the Famicom I'm makes a, me sad. I'm going to get shit for saying that <laughs> Batman and Robin goes above King Kong. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think you're wrong. So I mean, that's fine. It's just because I, I think I want it to be better. So in my mind, if I put it higher, I'll be like, it's okay. Uh, as 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 much as I appreciated what the game was and was doing, it's not. It's still not good. Yeah. Well, sure. You don't play. You don't put tank controls in an action game. You don't do that. You don't make Batman into a fighting game, but they did that once. You don't tell me uh, how to live my life. So, to run over our six games, Dirty Harry on the Nintendo, King Kong 2, Ikari no Megaton Punch, Famicom, Super Return of the Jedi, Super Nintendo, Texas Chainsaw Massacre on the Atari, I guess that's a game, uh, Batman and Robin on the PlayStation, and Predator 2 on the Sega Genesis. Tight. Fantastic. What a... Josh isn't allowed to pick themes anymore. (laughs) Come on. However... However, in modern day, there have been movie games uh, that have actually been pretty good. Got any honor- honorable mentions? I got, um, I got a couple. Chronicles of Riddick, good game. I've heard I've heard people enjoy that. Um, the new Mad Max, I've heard it was good. I haven't played it. And I'll throw one more. All the Lego Star Wars. <laughs> All the Lego games based on movies? Not Indiana Jones. I didn't think it was awful. It's just, who, like, who do you want to, like, who else do you care about in Indiana Jones besides Indy, you know? Indy! Yeah, that's all I want to play, so, like, I don't want to play with anybody else. <laughs> uh, I'd like to bring up Aladdin. 
Oh, I thought you were sticking a modern the, day. You liar. Well, I mean, there there have been good games that have come out in the past. Aladdin on the Super Nintendo and Genesis. Uh, that's a good franchise. Even the Lion, Lion King that came out on the Super Nintendo isn't isn't terrible. It's actually Stupid pretty good. hard, though. Really hard. Really hard. Yeah. Uh, the modern the modern Batman games. Batman Arkham City, Arkham Knight, Arkham Origins. Mm-hmm. Those are excellent. Preach. Really, yeah, really good. Um, after that, it's 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 really it's really tough to to get any. You know what? I'll look it up right now. We can say Golden Knight, but I don't think that game is as good as everyone says. Okay, best games based on movies. There we go. I'm clicking. I'm breaking one of my own rules. The police. <laughs> Oh frick! Alien Ice. Well, Alien Isolation isn't based off a movie, though. Uh, the alien. It might as well be, though, right? How about Aliens Colonial Marines? Am I right? <laughs> Come on, that is super cool game. So I just googled top ten movie based Godfather uh, games. Uh, this is from RockPaperShotgun.com. So Godfather. Sure. So Chronicles of Riddick. Yep. Alien vs Predator Classic Two Thousand. Shadow of Mordor. Wait, Alien vs. Predator... What? Class of 2000? Classic 2000. Oh, okay. I don't know. I remember I there's an Atari Jaguar game, Alien vs. Predator. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be really good. The PS2 one, I think it's talking about. Uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. That's just based off a franchise. Yeah, that's not... That's not Jurassic really Park, true. Operation Genesis. <laughs> what the fuck is this? No, that game sucks. What the hell is this list? Is it bad? <laughs> Go to a different website. Uh... Blade Runner was a game, I guess. It was. <laughs> Apparently. All right, sure. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Sure. There was a game called The Thing based off of the 80s Carpenter movie. Yeah, you know what? I forgot there was The Warriors. <laughs> Star Wars TIE Fighter. Come on, that's not fair. I, that's not really fair. We're, we were going straight, just straight up movie. How- Tron. Oh, um, uh, wait, I had a good Tron's one. Tron's number one, so screw that list. Try, yeah, can you go to a different website? No, I'd rather not. That was just to, that was just to say, <laughs> just to say some. None of those were good games. examples. <laughs> I think the best one, honestly, is uh, the Batman games and Aladdin. Yeah, I, I'd give it that. The Lego games are really fun, though. Lego. I really want Lego Force Awakens. Uh there's plenty of games based off anime that are pretty good, but that's a totally different topic altogether. Yeah, it is. We could we could do a whole segment on anime games. Actually, we couldn't. We have a 15 year rule. I lied. I'm sure they do exist though. They... There's like a Sailor Moon game that came out on the Super Nintendo. All right, so we got one. <laughs> there's there's a there's, there's a, a Gundam game. Plenty of Dragon Ball games out there. There's a Gundam game. <laughs> plenty of Gundam. There's an Evangelion game uh, for the PlayStation, I believe. We need to cut this rule ten years so I can play some games. No, man. I know. I don't. I'm not in charge. Then it wouldn't be retro anymore, would it? Yes, we're, it we're would. Push, we're pushing with fifteen. Okay, you have usually a very, it's like twenty. You have a very strict definition of the word retro. <laughs> yes. If you don't have if you don't have strict rules, then you're just going to break them, and then it then you kind of ruin the gimmick. You're a gimmick. Uh, I can be. All right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, so what do we have? Well, I guess that kind of closes us out, it, unless you got something else you want to bring up, some topics. Uh, nothing in particular. Actually. How about some mo- How about some games based on movies you'd like to come out? Oh, that I'd like to see made into a game. Okay. Yeah. So when I talked about that player known battlegrounds thing, right? I have an idea for a game, and it's okay. going to be based off the Hunger Games. So. The way it would work, it'd be like an online like shooter. I'm talking like 20 bucks. I don't want a full scale production here. And let's say you have a, a 4v4 <laughs> team death match, right? Or how many do they okay. have in Hunter Games? Like whatever, how many people are? Let's just use oh, eight people for an example. Sure. So as... I think it was one for each district, and I believe there was 12 districts. All right, so 24. 12 on 12. As more people get eliminated, <laughs> like the teams sporadically change. So let's say one team's up 12 to 10, right? One person from the winning team gets put, like, selected at random by the computer to the other team. So, like, alliances keep changing, and you never know, like, who's going to, like, turn and, like, be on the enemy side, like, and just keep swindling down from there. I would love some something like that. Okay. I can see it happening. Um, what's another movie that came out recently? Well, the, the, the Friday the 13th game's coming out. That is coming out, and I'm going to make a... 
A confession. I've never seen a Friday the 13th. Oh, you poor guy. Ooh, I know what you did last summer at the game. <laughs> I don't see how that would be very good. Probably the same well, as the may- movie. Maybe if it was a survival horror, like in the in the realm of Resident Evil 7. Yeah, that could work. And you're just constantly being stalked by the hook? The no. ice pick dude? Can I go reverse and I say I want a game made into a movie? No. Clock Tower. Actually, it is. It is? Yeah. Don't speak now. It's being made now in Japan. Oh, it's okay. And it looks really freaky. Somebody should have picked Sweet Home. Damn it. Yeah, the uh, the Clock Tower movie, I saw I saw the trailer for it, and um, it's uh, the trailer was a little boy and his, the, his little boy and his sister, I want to say, older sister, went out, they're on a cruise ship, and he's just hanging out in the room. And uh, he's like on his iPad, and and um, wa- I want to say water starts dripping or coming out of his iPad, and then uh, uh, Scissor Man comes up from out of the couch and like cuts his head off, and the sister comes in. <laughs> is, is, I kind of want to see this now. Is it? Gonna, yeah. Is it ever going to be you, subbed or dubbed or something? I don't think it would matter if it's freaky like that. <laughs> That's fair. You know, I just want to see. I, 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 obviously, I think it'd be subbed, but yeah, that 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 it looked really freaky. It, it, the The trailer was done really well. I hope it's gonna come out. Um, a movie turned into a game for me. Uh, I would like to see. Now I'm thinking outside the box here, man. I'm, um, I'm going. Your life is outside of the box. I would like to see. Uh, <coughs> let's call it. Uh, B mo- B movie horror trip. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you talking about B movie? Yeah, let's call it B movie horror trip. Now let's think of like the Freddy versus Jason kind of scenario okay. where I you're 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 a you're a, you're a male or female te- teenager, whichever. And every area, every level is you're teleported into a different horror movie level, and you have to escape. That would be or fight really, off the enemy. That would be so really, really good. Your main character falls asleep. You're into the Freddy uh, universe, and your whole objective is just to escape Freddy. Then uh, the character's like, "Wow, that was a terrible dream." I, you know, he wakes up and there's like shit all over him. You know, cuts, and then the fan, the family's like, "Oh, okay, well, we're going camping for the weekend," and they just happen to be hmm. at, uh, uh, you know, Lake Placid or whatever, and. <laughs> Just some stupid things like that, or the main character is a camp camp counselor there, and now you have to escape uh, Jason. Um, then it cuts to like months down the line. It's now Halloween, and Michael Myers is running rampant through the neighborhood, and you're just trying to like save your little brother from being killed. You know, just something like that. Hmm. You're just mixing in all the famous horror movie tropes and enemies, and it's just a survival game. You don't have to. You don't. You you don't try and beat them. You're just running away and trying to figure out ways to escape. <laughs> I'm not. You know what? You should probably get in contact with somebody and make that happen. <laughs> that would require so many freaking rights to do it, though. Okay, so do what Sony did with War of the Monsters and just have like a rip off Freddy. You know, like mm. this is definitely not Freddy. It's all kind of ca- it's 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 in that realm, but you don't have to call it the same character. It's just this character with knives on his hand. Exactly, his name is Frank. Because that's essentially what what Clock Tower Three is: is you're teleported into all these different serial killer worlds. Mm-hmm. But imagine that with you know modern a modern spin, and trying to trying to escape these these famous characters, or the characters that might as well be those characters. Yeah. You can't get the naming rights. It's, I mean, if you even made that... Instead of calling it Elm Street, it's called... Oak Street. Oak Street. <laughs> you know, it's Main stupid. Street. <laughs> instead, of, instead of going to whatever the camp was called, let's call it Lake Placid, it's like Lake Darkwater. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. You know? I can see how it. Speaking of Lake Placid, how about a Lake Placid game? Lake Placid. This just giant alligator is... is is chasing you the whole game. <laughs> Didn't they make a new Jaws movie or game? Uh, I'm sure. J- Jaws the game, I'm not sure how that would work. Unleash. Jaws Unleash on PS2 and 3DS of all things. 
Oh no. It's not bad. Uh, it's not bad. You get to play as Jaws. So yeah, the the horror the horror movies turned into the games would be an easy one. What about like an action game? Or wh- an action movie. An action movie. You know, because we got Batman. Mm, I want a good Superman game. I hate Superman as a character, but I wouldn't mind seeing a good Superman game. Well, Spider-Man's coming out, and they'll probably go over that at E3. Hell yeah. I'm just not a big Spider-Man guy myself. You're wrong. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I would, There's been a lot of Terminator games. I would like to see, like, Robocop vs. Terminator redone. Oh, kind of re uh, coming coming back to that franchise? Yeah. I feel like I feel like RoboCop is a little under underrepresented in modern day games. Actually, after the sixteen bit era, I don't think there's. Well, now that you mention it, what about Judge Dredd? There wasn't a new Dredd game uh, with the new reboot, but yeah. How about making a good one? Well, if um, if the new Rambo game is any indication, I don't want that. Have you played the new Rambo game? I have not. Don't. I haven't played a Rambo game since the Master System. Please look up Rambo on the PS3 and uh, prepare to cry. It's oh, a, it's that a, bad? It's a rail shooter um, that you can't use a light gun with. <laughs> on, and it came out as a full release for the PS3. Oh. And uh, oh. if you really like... That's like vo- releasing Time Crisis for the PS3 and you can't use the move controller. If you like voice acting, you can hear the famous... He's a man, not a ghost line every 40 seconds. Oh, no. Oh, it's bad. Ah. It's wonderful. You should play it. 10 out of 10. Maybe, man, maybe uh, a Jason Bourne game? There was a 360 game, I think. And I don't remember if it was good. There was also... Probably not. There was, um... Oh... It's got a yellow See, it all comes back to the, it, it all comes back to the game coming out. It's not made very well. It's just a cash cow. Mm-hmm. Mechanics aren't there, and it's very generic, generally. What was that movie where they shot the gun and you can, like, bend the trajectory of the bullets? What was that movie? Oh, oh with Angelina Jolie? Yeah, they have a game for that, and I wanted to play it, I remember. Um, oh. What's the name of that I can't, game? I can't, I can't remember, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. And then there's John Woo's well, there was a There was a game like that. It's called Max Payne. Jesus. Yeah, but this was, like, bad, and I wanted to see how bad it was. Uh I don't know. There's a bunch of um, there's a bunch of uh, Resident Evil the movie the game. I, how do I disconnect you from the Discord server? <laughs> Why don't we do Tomb Raider while we're at it too? Tomb Raider the movie the game with Angelina Jolie. Yeah, my favorite. <laughs> what else is there? Uh, all the Bond games. Uh, speaking of one, can we talk about how bad 007 Legends was? I mean, you can. <laughs> right, so I bought it on the best uh, platform to play shooters, the Wii U. Um, okay. And it's every Bond movie, you essentially play through the climax of every Bond movie, but the thing is, like, you're in the middle of, like, Goldfinger at the like at the climax of the movie, and then you beat the level, and then the next level is the climax of, like, Octopussy. And then... <laughs> It's like, with no transition, it's just like, okay, you got through that scene. Hey, remember in Goldeneye, this part, and then you play that part. So it was one level, the, uh... Only the climax the of the movie. final encounter between, uh, with all the mirrors with the man and the golden gun. Yep. And, <laughs> and the best part is, uh, you have to be Daniel Craig in all of them. Even, <laughs> even in those movies he was not in at all. That's, that's like, that's exactly like my, uh, my, my hard... You're you're just transported to all the all the areas, but this is ridiculous. Now, <laughs> it's so funny. On, on a good related note, um, from Russia with love for the PS2 and Xbox, uh-huh. it's a third person Bond game, which is already unique, but it's also old voiced by Sean Connery. So you have old Sean Connery voicing young Sean Connery, <laughs> and it's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna have to look up this uh, this 007 Legends. Yeah, get on the get on the Wii U because it's, it's bad. <laughs> It's is it is it comically bad? It's just so confusing. You're just like you play through a whole mission, and then like the next level starts. You're like, oh, I'm gonna finish up Goldfinger, and then you're like, oh, a new Bond girl's in my face. Why are you here? Like, and Daniel Craig is in all the Bond films now. It sounds it sounds amazingly terrible, and I need to play it. It's fairly cheap, and uh, it's like when they did the Goldeneye remake, and Daniel Craig is um, Pierce Brosnan, who's my favorite Bond still. Oh, we could have a conversation about that one, how wrong you are. 
But the thing is, like, I see Pierce Brosnan in another movie, and I think, oh, James Bond is in that movie. But if I see, Dude, like... It's 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 Roger Moore. You you just... You're, you're so wrong. Roger Moore I don't even was, want to get into it. Roger Moore was the best ladies' man, I won't lie. And that's what James Bond's supposed to be, so... Wrong. Thank you, I win that. Let's, uh... <laughs> let's, uh... Let's, uh... Let's announce our next topic. Ooh, can I get to say it? your choice I this get, time. It is... Um... How do I want to make this the most nice way possible? It is eight and sixteen bit mist. How do I how do I phrase this? Mascots so that didn't make it. Yeah, I guess. And we're the, sticking and we're sticking with only the eight to sixteen bit era. So Nintendo, Super Nintendo. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, Master System, Genesis, Game Boy. You can do Game Boy too. Throw some Game Boy in there because I I yeah. have one, but I'm not picking it. So we're not we're not going we're not going into the the Saturn or the PlayStation because keeping it 2D. We're keeping it we're keeping it simple. Um, that would allow us to maybe go back to Miss Mascots for the later generations. User. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited for that one. I'll have to do a little bit of research. You picked your two games out because you were quick on that one. Yeah, I have. Um, do I say them now or no? No, 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 no. Oh. So we'll we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely hopefully be able to get Josh on the next one. Um, I want to get into more than just once a month doing this because that's what it's seemingly becoming. It's which I'm not hard with life, man. <laughs> we're trying. It, I mean, it's not that we're we're not playing the games on time. It's just we can't get even two of us together. <laughs> yeah, life is hard. But I wrote down my this day and everything's gonna work. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna research my my two my two picks before and then uh if we want to go i mean i'd really want to go even farther and maybe just have three each we'll, get, we'll take it long you know what i mean i'm uh, i'm into that you're into that if we can make it work i mean that's nine games that's hard though i don't know man i i i have struggles with six with my schedule we could let's tr- try it we could let's try it let's could, try for nine we're, oh, oh, we're gonna do nine now we should talk yeah. to josh about this <laughs> Well, do, well, let's let's try and do nine. So I got to pick another. I'm, I got to pick another game. You got to pick another game. I think it, I think Jeez. it'd be a lot of fun. All right, so I'll, I'll try. I'm not making any promises. I, eight I, to I, sixteen bit missed mascots. I'm really cutting it close. I just want to remind you. Excellent. I Great. can't wait. This has been episode seven of the Red Leaf Retrocast Movie Games, where we spoke about E3 earlier. Fantastic conversation. I had a blast doing this. Um, hated most of the games. <laughs> Good. I feel like that's a theme we've been having lately. Uh, we're just trying to punish each other. It's like, no, don't play these people. <laughs> Whatever. We play them so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm going to pick one really bad. Uh, wait, so are we doing nine for the next one? We're doing we're doing nine just for the next episode. It's like a little special. All right, fine. Eight. Then I'm going to punish uh, the shit out of you. This has been the Red Leaf Retrocast. I am JD from Moosenspiel and Twitter at BowlingJD. With Kevin from Console Kev, you can find him on the slew of everything YouTube, VidMe, Twitter. Back and don't forget to check out Dr- Josh from Power Chord Gaming, also on Twitter. And he's doing Final Fantasy, play all the games ever, punish himself. So, yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it, and go get some David's Tea. It's summer's around the corner, it's getting hot. <laughs> Word.